You straight up cuckooed that dude, bro. Oh my god. You've got all your Charger gear on because I'm feeling fresh as hell. Well, you guys better enjoy it. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move, and throws, and touchdown! Players, coaches, staff, fans, together, we can create something truly special. Stay tuned for some good content. <laughs> well, happy Victory Tuesday, everybody. That's right. Ride it. Ride the way from Monday to Tuesday. Tuesday, I can see Kevin is feeling it. Yes, he's got a so excited. I didn't plug my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> I just like raged and ripped my headphones out. This is awesome. Oh gosh, folks, welcome back to the Charger Chat. I'm your co-host Wooldog, sitting with my buddy Kev Huggin Duggan. What's up, guys? And where the heck is Kyle? He's supposed to be here. He's late. What's going on? I think he's got caught in a blizzard or something up at Big caught Bear. In a blizzard in <laughs> California? Who'd have thought? It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, folks. Kyle the Coach Duggan is apparently snowed in <laughs> in California. <laughs> Never thought I'd say those words. But, That's our uh, job. That's what we're supposed to do. Yeah, the Midwest. That's, yeah. that's what we do, but... Uh, he's snowed in right now, so we're going to try to bring him in for the Ask Bolt fam. Hopefully we can. Uh, might be might be a little gorilla style, but we're going to try. We're going to go for it. Hey, we're going to shoot for the moon. Do what you can. I will we'll figure it shoot out. Shoot first, ask questions Exactly. Later. There you go. Um, all right. Well, obviously, folks, lots to talk about after this massive win uh, on Sunday. Sunday night, prime time. God, it's so good. It's <sighs> still awesome to say. Uh, lots to talk about, and as always, we have a bolt inside a fan focus and a I don't know what the meaning of short and sweet is. Ask bolt fan. <laughs> the people are really brought their uh, novelizations to to play this. Everybody's episode. a freaking comedian. <laughs> I swear to God, I can't uh, wait. I can't wait. It'll be good. It, so this might be. <laughs> check the timer, folks. This might be the longest episode we've ever done. Yep. Will it be? Only find out i will tell <laughs> all right well let's start it off here at the top looking at twitter twitter is always a wonderful source of delicious facts and tidbits and espn <laughs> stats and info uh is no different tweeting out justin herbert completed 39 of 51 passes which is 76.5 percent if you do the math uh, and tonight's win over the dolphins becoming the first player in chargers history to complete 70% of his passes on at least 50 attempts. He's they're coming up with things for him to break. Like this is awesome. Like this, the, the amount who of knew things, this was a record to break. I didn't there, there's so many <laughs> hidden records we have no idea about, but he's going to break them eventually. Right. Way, that's incredible to have that that mint that percentage when yeah. you throw for over 50 times. That's 76.5% on 51 pass attempts. He was f-ing, I went back and watched the game. Yeah. He was possessed yeah. he was a man on fire and i was real happy about it well it was it was again it was a game that we were going into it i mean you and i looking at each other going like are we how are we feeling and it's just like i mean i'm i'm here i'm rooting for him but <laughs> yeah. i don't know got if, my uh, jersey on <laughs> i don't know what to do or expect but we're gonna oh here we go <laughs> and uh and man, it just was again just a game that almost had no right to be that good. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? With the yeah. Chargers being as down as they were with injuries, with the Miami Dolphins having the wins that they've had, with Tua being in conversations for an MVP. And that's just done, to, by the way. Which is gone now, yeah, by that, the way. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh it just for that to be the result nobody saw coming i mean every analyst said miami dolphin should have won this game. so the whole screen it, it, i think i feel like they brought in like 20 extra people to weigh in on that graphic like the, right. the, the boxes were so small because they, like they were 50 tiny people on there <laughs> all of them all dolphins, dolphins. <laughs> and yeah, that so uh, didn't work out didn't work out so yes for justin herbert again to come out and play the way he did the way the defense came out and play the way that they did the plays that we were doing i mean again the freaking wildcat <laughs> that was so wildcat yeah. when has that ever been Boy, part of the chargers <laughs> lexicon <laughs> like, i know when, like i seriously want to look it up now like when the last time was the chargers even well, tried to do a wildcat who did we have we had ronnie 
was it Williams? It was a while ago. I'd say over 10 years ago. Where wow. yeah, it's been a hot freaking minute. Yeah. So I mean when, when Kyle when Kyle and I did the episode on last Thursday, we were like, we want all the spice, you know, give me all the juice. This is there's no point in waiting until the end of the season for playoffs to start yeah. getting silly and creative. Like we gotta start now. And obviously that's what happened. The Chargers yeah. came out and executed like crazy. And uh, Nick Cothrell also tweeted out the Chargers have a 59% chance to make the playoffs per 538, which is another Twitter account. A win over the Titans in week 15 could shift their odds to 79%. I like that. And I also like I how like those the, odds. Yes. the Titans aren't playing that well right now. Um, they right. just lost. Didn't they just lose to the Jaguars? Yes. So yeah, the Jaguars... And- yeah, pretty handedly. And I think right now the Patriots are winning at the moment, yeah. which is it's not un- looking good for the Patriots losing this Monday night football. Uh, yeah. Let's take a look. Well, they lost. Uh, what's his name? Their, their quarterback went down, blew his ACL, the Arizona quarterback. Uh, oh, Kyler I, Murray. Kyler Murray blew his ACL. Get <laughs> like out of here. Yeah, they carted him off. It, it did not look good. Yikes. Yeah. OK, yeah, no, the game's over. 27-13 is the final score. Bummer. So yeah, it is a bummer, but. We control our. We, we have the control of it in our hands. Like yes. we we don't have to fully rely on what you know the Patriots losing to still have it. We just dropped out. They just step back into seven. But I feel like it's going to be this pop 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 pop. And the way everyone aligns and plays each other's coming up, it's going to be. It could work out pretty well. Yeah. Um. More records to talk about, but not of Herbert breaking this time. We're now talking about Austin Eckler, who now holds the record for most receptions in NFL history by an undrafted running back. And he's, he's a monster again. Like I, 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 I'm curious to see how many receptions he had this last game because I know he had quite a few. But um, and I think I also just saw a tweet recently that he is basically on track to break the record for most receptions by any running back yeah. in a single season. Yeah. So it's uh it's looking really good for Austin Eckler to have himself a back to back awesome year uh as, as the Chargers running back and so so thankful for number 30 baby. I had to wear number 30 today. Good call. Um all right, well looking back again at this game, this 23 to 17 win uh when you look at the stats <laughs> comparatively between uh, passing yards, rushing yards, receiving yards. I mean, we're talking Herbert's 367 passing yards versus Tua's measly 145. Yeah. Only completed 10 passes. Uh, it was, um, it was a, yeah, that I think the, the argument like the, who's better. I think you can put that it to was absolutely put to bed that night. Yeah. Um, it, it, you build on that from there. We got to get him into the playoffs with him to win some shit. Yes. Really finalize it, but it's it feels pretty good. Yeah. And looking at lead rushers, Austin Eckler had 15 carries for 45 yards and a touchdown versus Raheem Mostert, who only had 11 carries for 37 yards. I mean, uh, we had to have kept their rushing yards to under 100. It was, under, right? it was 100, yeah. It was like 90-something. Yeah, yeah. It was one of the better performances we've had. And oddly, they chose not to run very much. It, they were throwing, and our that secondary is surprising. locked them up. So that was yeah. kind of an odd choice. Yeah. And then on the receiving side, leading receiver Mike Williams, six receptions for 116 yards and a touchdown. Way to, way to come back from oh, an dude. injury, man. Like yeah. that that's the way to come back is to come back and just go boom, here's my name, Mike Williams. Don't forget it. I and, feel like uh, the and I feel like the team, like I think when the players are ready to play, they're like they're not like limping them back into games. The way that it sounds like Staley's doing it right now, it's like, well, you have to be hundred percent before you go back in. Mm-hmm. So that's when when he says like jo- uh, Joey's coming back, he's getting close. I think as soon as he practices, he's gonna be playing that week. You know right. what I mean? I feel like that's the yeah. mentality of the team. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what's happening there. Yeah, this would be a week to keep an eye on uh, on what uh, on the injury report, basically, to see who's out there practicing and who's not. And if Bosa's name ends up on that list, that is something to be excited about. Um, <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. And uh, Emmanuel Acho. Dumb, dumb, God, dumb, dumb, dumb. This has been just like the biggest Twitter. That was like... The, Besides the game, this was the biggest thing going on on Twitter while Sunday Night Football was happening. Uh, for those that didn't see, because I we didn't talk about it on the instant reaction, the brisket broads uh, dropped the mic 
Uh, they came in prepared with a Fresh Prince of Bel Air dance. Yeah, it was awesome. They put the VHS filter on there, which was just Loved that it. extra bit of spice. Yeah, uh, with the, with their sign that they took to the game. Yeah, social media analyst Emmanuel Acho wearing a clown wig and clown nose, and it was so awesome that it caught the eye of Emmanuel Acho. Now Emmanuel Acho was thinking that he could just come into this game as a, you know, as Emmanuel Acho. I, I'm on a show. I'm on network TV. Yeah. Surely I can come in. Surely they'll give me a the pass. Red carpet. Let me red walk carpet upon treatment. me with the carpet upon my feet. But as uh, Air Raid Buffalo tweeted out, good on the LA Chargers for denying Emmanuel Acho a sideline <laughs> pass to their game. Guy wasn't being fair or critical or ha- quote unquote having some fun. He's been using their QB as a punching bag for clicks. More teams need to stand up to bad media. That's exactly. And that's what that it was. So proud of the Chargers for this. I didn't, I, you don't know, under, understand like the background, like the behind the scenes of how this all works. Like they, people like, I'd love to get on the field. That'd be great. And they're just like, uh, uh, uh-uh. I don't, we know don't who you are. So. We know who you Your are. Your name we is Emmanuel you. Acho. Yeah. You've got, you're, could hardly consider yourself a reporter and your take is terrible. So, GTFO, my friend. Yeah. Go pound sand. And then um, he, but did you see his like thing that he did today? Like his like. Yeah. Well, let the hang. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll sorry, get sorry. to that. Uh, so Brisket Broads dropped their video. It catches the eye of Emmanuel Acho, who doesn't have a sideline pass to this game. No sideline pass. And says, hey, uh, would you basically, I, I'm, I'm shortening and I'm giving you the cliff notes here, but basically says, hey, why don't you come up? or meet me halfway between my private booth, wherever the hell that was, and where you guys are at section 123 or something like that. Yeah. And the brisket broads replied in probably the best way that any Charger fan that considers themselves diehard in any way could have answered it and said, "Uh, no, we like to stay in our seats even during halftime because we don't want to miss one second of game. If you're going to come, you come to us. So, yeah, hey, don't call us. We'll call you, basically. If you want (laughs) to come, you can walk your happy little ass down to our (laughs) section on the fourth row. Yeah. And then we can have a little combo or whatever. So, Emmanuel Acho, to his credit, said, okay, came down, came down to the fourth row with the brisket broads, had his picture taken with them. I don't know what was said. I'm really curious what the conversation was. If you see the video... Uh, I think it was Heather reaches. He reaches out to like shake a hand and she gives him the. Ooh, really? Yeah. So wow. it's just, it's just next level. Prou- proud of them. I they, am I, so proud of the brisket broads. Most people in this opportunity and I, you know, it's hard to say if I wouldn't do it, be like, Oh cool. Like meeting somebody that's like on, you know, a Fox sports, like this is awesome. And let's take an opportunity to like take a picture. Together. Yeah. We'd look and, at each other and be like, dude, Emmanuel Lacha wants to talk yeah, to us. Like, and we they were like, go. uh, not impressed. Um, eh, I don't think yeah. so. Uh, loser. Yeah. Loser. (laughs) So, yeah. So Emmanuel Acho, you know, went down, had his picture taken with the brisket rods. They've exploded. I know that like at one point they had like 400 (laughs) followers on Twitter. I don't know where they're at now, but before I went to bed, it was like easily over 600. So they're, they're wrong. um, They deserve it. They should keep it up. They absolutely deserve it. Keep it up, ladies. Um, and so this morning, uh, after Emmanuel Acho basically said that, like, if Tua wins, I'm going to be the most annoying person in the world and yeah. talk about how awesome Tua is. But if Herbert wins, then I will retire, retire from sports media. Yeah. We were all shocked to see Emmanuel Acho show up to work today and give the most half-assed <laughs> apology yeah, I I think anybody could have ever said like to lay down a bed of like I will retire to then go to like well I'll I'm, keep my beak shut till the end of this of the regular season, but then it's going to open back up again and I'm going to start talking trash. Again. I'm going to put some duct tape on, but that shit won't stay on forever. So like this will be on and in like it's three not even weeks, duct tape. It's like masking tape yeah. basically. Like it's the weakest tape you could have possibly put on his lips and so. the most half ass like apology too. Yeah, it was no, half, it's, it was all half assed. It was all half assed and. I know a lot of people have been saying, well, he's giving out bad takes because he wants the attention. He wants people to come and watch his show and see how bad he is. It's like, 
I, I mean, I've got him muted. It's just like I don't, I don't yeah, need to too. give him the time of day. Like we're gonna for, give him the time of day right now, but this is the last you're gonna hear of this. Yeah, if hole. if you're gonna throw down and say that I will retire from sports media and then not live up to that, sorry, yeah. you're a welcher. You yep. you welch on a bet, uh, and you are the clown social media analyst that the brisket broad say that you are. And if they say it, it's true. And if they say it, it's true. It is. Look it up. Look it up, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. Well, enough about Emmanuel Acho, though. I know that there will be lots of people talking about it in Ask Bolt Fam. Uh, let's move on to the next tweet. Uh, Gino Camilleri tweeted out Justin Herbert had more completions tonight, 39, than Emmanuel Acho had tackles in his entire NFL career, which was 33. Nice. Look it up. Nice. We'll go okay. out. We'll go out with that. There you go. There you go. But I'm sure we'll come back to it. I'm sure we'll uh, talk about it again. <laughs> All right, well, now let's look over at the injury report. As I mentioned, we got out of that game without any Chargers having to leave the game due to injury. Pretty unscathed. And so far, far. it looks to be like nobody got hurt during that game. Yeah. Um, Nobody's been tweeting out any injuries or anything like that. Incredible, really. Which we'll find out when the injury report actually comes out. Because sometimes we get blindsided and we're like, Will Clamp dealing with a shoulder injury? What? Like Nobody heard about that. Yeah. So we'll see. But uh, Daniel Popper tweeted out uh, Brandon Staley on whether Joey Bosa could return to practice this week. Anything is possible. <laughs> Man, coach, stop being so vague. I need to know. <laughs> Just stop it. Is he coming back? No. no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, uh, what are you going to do? It's always one of those things where, like, you know, another team's got to prepare for you. Mm-hmm. So wouldn't it make more sense? Yeah, to keep not it close give them to the a chest. couple more days to prepare for him and just right. kind of like whoop, throw them in there at the last minute. That's what I, mean, I would do. Yeah, it's, it's warfare. It's, it's, it's warfare. not like they've it's the got sneak attack. Yeah, yeah. That's not like they've got a lot of tape to work with anyway, other than Bosa's you know career. But just like got to now, you got to Mac and Bosa. No one's had to do that since like week two and a half. Right. So yeah, don't be don't be upset if he's playing it close to the chest. It's obviously a strategy to say whether or not Joey Bosa is going to be playing. Anything's possible. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and then Daniel Pomper also tweeted out this also sneaky bit of information. Brandon Staley said there is definitely a chance that Rashawn Slater will return in the regular season. Uh, it's possible, and then there's definite. So this feels pretty good. Yeah. Feels pretty so good. For him to say that Joey Bosa, well, oh, it's possible. I don't know. Maybe yeah. he will. Maybe he won't. Why do you ask? And to say, oh, there's definitely a chance He's for Rashawn Slater to come back. The question is when. Like, let's it get is. let's hopefully we can get a win this week and make our things a little make our life a little easier and more comfortable. And then right. you bring him back those last two games and just start getting them ready for the playoffs. That's yes. the ideal setup, right? I would think so, yes. Um, yeah, this is again, folks, we talked about this, about finishing strong, about getting guys healthy, finishing healthy the right time at the right time and getting such key players back like Joey Bosa and Rashawn Slater could be all the difference in the world to get these guys into the playoffs. So, uh, we will have to wait and see, um, coach Daly also on returning players said Bryce Callahan, Sebastian Joseph day and Trey Pipkins will be back in practice this week. We're going to do a walkthrough on Wednesday. You will see them in practice on Thursday. Uh, safety Derwin James is still day to day. You will know as we go <coughs> through this week, that's where that is at. Okay. So uh, Derwin's injury seems like it's a little more intense than we thought it was. Well, yeah, I mean, Ca- we, who would have thought? Bit. Like if the injury occurred in the Cardinals game yeah, played and through that. played through it, in the Raiders. Raiders game and then was bad enough to keep him out of this last game. It was like, okay, well, wait a minute. What happened? Like, yeah. and he finished what, the game too. So it's not like a thing where he right. got pulled or whatever. So that was, no, he didn't always end odd. it early or anything like that. So yeah. don't know the full extent of Derwin's injury, but getting guys like Callahan, Sebastian, Joseph day and Trey Pipkins back again would be Huge. again, just a big help. Huge. Big time. Um, all right. So here's some Staley quotes. Uh, first on tackle Rashawn Slater. There is a potential for him to return. I do think that we're weeks out, but he's rehabilitating in our facility and doing well. 
That timeline, certainly, I know you guys are compelled to continually ask about these players. His timeline is definitely the same as Joey Bosa. I want to make that very clear so that perhaps we can conserve some of that. I think there is <laughs> conserve some the of these up. freaking repetitive me. questions, you sons of bitches. <laughs> Staley didn't say that. No, uh, didn't. I think there is a definite, uh, there's definitely a chance. I'm pretty, I'm a pretty optimistic person. Just in general, he's given me pretty good reason to be optimistic. He's healing well. I would expect that if Rashawn Slater could do it, he will. So then this is a little more leading because then it's Joey Bosa and him are on the same timeline. So a couple more weeks is what this feels like. I don't know. We, we're hearing Joey Bosa's come, at least coming back to practice. So what does it all mean? Why would he come back to practice if he's not at least somewhat ready to go? I mean, does he really need a week to get warmed up, so to speak? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Something to keep an eye on, folks. And then Staley on quarterback Justin Herbert's celebration after the victory. Staley said, I'm not going to interpret what Justin is feeling. <laughs> Who could, really? Yeah. Um, I'm going to let him interpret his feelings for you guys, and I'm sure that will be a fun process. <laughs> he was on fire today wow. at, his, at his press conference. He was having fun. Uh, I would tell you that our team played a very hungry game last night. I thought there was a lot of energy that we used in all three phases. I think starting with Justin and how he played in the game, not just the passing and playmaking, but I'm just talking about affecting his teammates in a positive way. I think our team comes alive when he plays that way. I think you guys have seen it before. I think he's battled this entire season and has shown the toughness the highest level of toughness that you could want from a quarterback. You get a couple of weapons back and he's able to really go play his game. And he goes and plays that type of way in prime time. Everyone is going to feed off that energy. I think he can sense that too. When he plays with that energy, how he's having that effect on people. I'm going to let him speak for himself in terms of all the other stuff, but I know what he did uh, I know what he did. A great job of last night was affecting his teammates beyond the performance. You guys were all at the game, but I just think the other part of it is part of it was as important for us as anything. We go out there in two minute at the end of the game and he's down there with the defense before we take the field. Just those little things I thought were really big in the game. He's coming into his own this season. He, you know, I think it's so interesting that like, we all came together the first game where all levels were playing this well mm -hmm. when Justin was fired up. Yes. You know what I mean? I think that's, that's kind of a fascinating look at this and the leader that he is and how affecting he is on other people. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. It is. Well, I mean, he comes into the, comes into the game, uh, you know, a college starter, uh, comes in uh, on a crazy situation, has an amazing season, but is so, humble in his upbringing and his character and what he does you know he lets the action speak for itself anybody that tries to pay him a compliment he deflects it to somebody else yeah and so i think he's now realizing that like it's okay to be yourself and not necessarily like get a big head about it but just like yeah it's all right to like show emotion and to kind of have some fun like he's not First necessarily down. a robot out there. I mean, we saw yeah. it in that first season when he was like, I was in, I was in, like he's screaming. Yeah. So like, we do see that that has been there since the beginning, but I think we're seeing more of it now. He's feeling more And I think his teammates too. are seeing more of it now. Yeah, like he's got his guys back. He feels yeah. like, I don't know, there's just something about, you know, that game where it just felt different. It, absolutely. Well, I mean, the camera was catching it. Camera was catching Justin Herbert getting hyped up. We're seeing smiles. Yeah. We're seeing the point back and forth between Keenan Allen and Justin Herbert. We're seeing the, the fist shaking, the first down marking. Like, he was having fun. And that, I think, is so important for him to have fun playing in a game that means so much and to come out with a W. And I mean, again, and even like after the game, when he comes in with the ball and he spikes it on the ground, yeah, like so good that you, I, you don't see that Justin Herbert in his rookie season. Now that he's all. in his third season, now that he's comfortable. And when he does that, he's not getting people going like, Oh, why'd you do that? It's like, yeah, like we're Let's excited go. for this. Yeah. Um, yeah. hundred percent. Um, all right. Well, if you're excited, you can go on over to our Patreon, <laughs> patreon.com slash charger chat. Uh, check out some of the fun, exclusive videos we have over there. Some really uh, lots of laughs to, to be had over there. 
Um, and we always need to shout out our newest patrons. We've got three this week. We've got Nick Judge, Daryl Sandlin, and Brian Gago. Welcome, Thank you guys. Welcome Thank you guys party, so much. Yeah, that's right. Um, and if you don't want to go to patreon.com, that's a okay. You can go on over to chargerchat.com. Check out all the cool stuff we've got over there t shirts, hoodies, and stickers. You can chat it up with other Charger Chatteteers in our member section and ask questions in Ask Bolt Fam. So go check out chargerchat.com. All right, gang, it's time to go on to the next segment. It is Bolt Insight, and we've got a very special guest uh, mm. for this Bolt Insight. He's a, something of the year. I yes. Something I was told. Some accolade. Some kind uh, of accolade. Yeah, yeah to, to discuss. Yeah. And I'm excited to see what, uh, what comes from that. So let's go to it, Bolt Insight. As soon as that clock starts, your ass is mine. When I met Justin Herbert, man, that dude is big as hell. You know, the goal is to just keep it rolling. Come in hype because we have a lot of things to be excited about. All right, guys, we are back and we have the man himself, Chargers fan of the year. Enrique is with us. What is going on, brother? What's going on, man? Thank you for having me on. Sorry, guys, I'm a little sick at the moment, but couldn't. Couldn't cancel all my guys. Makes the two of us do. We'll get through this together. Sick, sick brothers. Let's this. go. Um, and <laughs> Die Hard Bull Club president. Can't leave that out. Um, you keep up all of that amazing work, but we got to get this started, baby. Thanks. Fan of the year. How did this just run me through how this happened? Like the, the process of being uh, submitting or how that works and then getting picked. Like, what was that like? Dude, so um, I think the nomination started back in like July, August, maybe. Um, and then I, for, I forget, somebody tweeted it. It was like, I nominate Rike, whatever. And I was like, oh, dude, I'm honored. Thank you. And then that like kind of started a chain reaction where like other people on Twitter were like, oh, you're my pick too. And I nominate you. And, you know, you guys jumped on it. Uh, all of the HPC decided to jump on it. Um, and frankly, I, I was humbled, honored, never thought they would pick me. You know, I've made this comment a couple of times, but shout out to Jen Mills' husband, Matt. She told me, he made the comment to me because I said to him, it's like, dude, I would never thought I would get picked because I'm just like some, I'm a construction worker, you know, like I'm not like an army veteran or doctor and all this. He's like, no, man, stop putting yourself down like that. You're not just a construction worker. So I'm not going to say that. I was saying that for a while, but it honestly, I never thought I was going to win. Like, you know, when people were nominating me, I was very honored and it was amazing to see all the support and people that nominated me. So shout out to everybody that did and the amazing things that you guys wrote about me because when I thank Jessica and the Chargers, also shout out to Jessica. She's been amazing. Um, she told me when I thanked her, she said, no, don't thank me. Thank everyone that nominated you. You should have seen the amazing things they said about you. So that really like, you know, it made me get emotional because I, didn't think I had that much of an impact on people. So it's really a humbling and amazing experience to see the support and love that I've gotten throughout all this. And at the beginning, I was kind of focusing a little bit on like, I was kind of focusing a little bit on some of the hate that I started getting. And then uh, somebody told me like, dude, you're going to focus on like the 10 people that are hating compared to the hundreds, hundreds that are supporting you and are happy for you. And that, that snapped me right out of it. And I was like, you know what? You're right. You're like, this is such an amazing accomplishment that I never thought I was going to get. I never did any of this with that aspiration uh, in mind. I didn't even think this was possible. Like I said, you know, cause I think the first year that they did fan of the year in 2020, some doctor won it, you know, and then to be right after that, Jen Mills, <laughs> like she's the queen, yeah. you know? So, uh, to go after her is kind of like a big thing for me. So I definitely didn't think it was going to happen. So the nominations kind of started happening and I read somebody, Pablo read on uh, online that doesn't matter how many nominations you get, like the vote, like the judging goes uh, to different stages, I guess. So I was like, ah, I'm gonna start promoting it. Right. But I guess even in that little period that people still nominated was enough for me to win. Uh, so I had kind of low key forgot about it until October, like 20 something, the chargers had to DM me on Twitter because, you know, I get a bunch of spam calls on my phone, so I don't really answer mm -hmm. random numbers. 
and the Chargers didn't leave me a voicemail. And also Jessica emailed me on my email that I've had since like high school. So I have like, hopefully know, it was super like, embarrassing and a really high school <laughs> email address. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just my last, my first and last. Okay, gotcha. uh, thankfully, thankfully yeah, yeah. it wasn't, uh, like you know some embarrassing stuff that when you hear that you know, <laughs> something was 69 at the end you know what i mean you don't yeah, want to have my, any of those my aol the aim thing yeah yeah that was probably the worst that i'm glad i don't <laughs> yeah 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 i didn't i didn't keep that but uh anyway uh so she i guess emailed me on that email called me on my phone i didn't reply on october 18th and then i guess the charges had to submit their submission by the 20th and you know they finally contacted me on the 24th. The Chargers DM me on Twitter. and was like, hey, dude, please contact this person. They've been trying to get a hold of you. Promise you with good news. So I finally contacted her. And she like tried to tell me that I was a finalist, that you know there was other finalists and they were going to be interviewing me with all the judges. And if I was available for a Zoom call. And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, and uh, it took like a week to schedule because she kept telling me that they were so busy interviewing all the other finalists. So I was like, dang, how many are there, you know? Yeah. Uh, so she finally told me like, hey, November 1st, are you available? Uh, we're interviewing a couple of finalists that day and I think we could fit you in. And I was like, oh, all right, sounds good. So we interviewed, uh, you know, it was like four people on the Zoom call. All of them worked for the Chargers. And uh, I mean, shout out to them because they made it, they played it really well. Um, that They were just supposed to interview me to see who I was and see if they wanted to pick me. Mm. Um, at the end of that phone call, Jessica said, if I was available on Thursday, it was a Tuesday to go to the Chargers facility at 1130. So I was like, damn, dude, I got work. How am I going <laughs> to yeah, make this yeah. happen? Like such short notice. I even told my wife, so shout out to <laughs> Sasha. Um, I was like, should I even go? Like, there's going to be so many finalists. And like I said, I kind of was like, they're not going to pick me. You know, there's so many other amazing people out there. Um, and Sasha was like, dude, you never know. Just go. And I was like, all right, you know what? Whatever. And I went, I showed up, I got there early and the Chargers started playing this whole thing with me that, oh, since you're here early, we'll interview you first. You know, they videotaped me walking in and said that we're going to do that for the other finalists once they arrive. Feel something that's a little sketchy as something's a brewing. Was, I, I thought it was sketchy. <laughs> the fact that like, in a good way, they made me go to the Charger facility like two days notice. Made me call off work, you know, yeah. and kind of like. I want to make sure you are committed and worthy of fan of the year. <laughs> exactly. So I thought it was fishy. I was like, dude, that's kind of messed up. They're gonna make me drive all the way to Costa Mesa, <laughs> take off work, <laughs> and then they told me that they were gonna videotape this interview. That if they did pick me, we would videotape again. Okay. And I'm like, well, f- they're kind of messed up. You know? like, <laughs> they were like toying with my emotions. And I was like, dude, this is kind of like, this is fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, like they were. So uh, I think even through the interview, um, Tyler, the guy that was interviewing me, he, when he asked me like, um, who's your favorite player? And after I answered, like he pulled out his phone and started texting. And I was kind of like, <laughs> that's rude. <laughs> I was that's like, that's awesome. kind of rude, bro. Like we're in the middle of an interview here. Right. Uh, yeah, and yeah. then, he kept telling me, like, dude, don't be nervous. You know, we've done this before. Because he's interviewed me the previous two times that the Chargers did something for me. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so I know him, I guess, pretty well by now. And he's like, dude, just don't don't stress. Like, you know, there's this isn't the final interview. Like, so he kept playing along. Then uh, the photographer, Mike, he took me to another room and started taking all these pictures that now you see online. Yeah. Um, and even he was like, don't worry. If you don't get picked, I'll make sure I get these to Karen. Because he knows that they were playing so you, man. They were those detail. Yeah. This is the detailed. They, yeah, no, they were messing with me hard. This is good. So I was that even when Mike said, I was like, yo, that's f- up. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, uh, and I also was kind of thinking to myself because this whole interview and pictures took like over almost an hour. So I was kind of like, damn, dude, I'm glad I got here early. Yeah. Or else I would have been downstairs waiting in the lobby. Right. Yeah. Um, and then Tyler came back to the room where I was taking the pictures and Tyler was like, hey, dude we need to have one more question for you before we bring up the other contestant, right? Or whatever. And I was like, okay, sounds good. And that's when I sat down and the video starts where Derwin James came through and 
you know. Uh, that was, dude, right? that was so epic. Like, people were using that as like a gif of like him like coming up on you all b- over your <laughs> shoulder. It was so good. Dude, it was the most amazing thing because I heard the door open. But when I was getting interviewed the first time, people kept coming in and out. So I didn't think anything of it. I never thought Derwin was behind me. Like You didn't hear the when door you, opening. He was like, oh, Derwin James in the room. I felt like a chill in the room. Something you know, happened, like, a vibe. Dude, like it was a, you, I, you just knew trouble was there. <laughs> it was awesome. awesome. It was awesome. Like, um, And how humble and awesome he was to me, that's something I'll never forget. You know, because he's the best safety in the league. You know, right now he's in his prime. Yeah. New contract, all this. And uh, it was like I met a friend. You know, like yeah. the way he was talking to me, the way he shook my hand. Uh, it was le- legit. It felt like I was hanging out with a friend, you know. So I shout out to Darren James. If you were my favorite player before, you are now. You know, like, <laughs> too. that was awesome of him. Uh, I'll, it's a moment I'll never forget. Something I'll probably talk about for ever. You know, uh, for the past two weeks, I've been kind of like trying to wrap my mind around what happened. Yeah. And, uh, you know, trying to also stay humble and, you know, not forget that this isn't why I do what I do. But I think today I was telling Sasha, like, it finally hit me. Like, dude, out of all the Charger fans in the world. You're our rep, dude. You're our representative. (laughs) And we are proud of it because could not be a better representative for us, brother. Thank you, brother. I truly appreciate it. Uh, you know, if anything, this is going to make me work even harder with you guys now. Uh, you know, like I said, I never did any of this for that. But now that I got that recognition, I can't let anyone down. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and it's been the goal from the beginning to grow the Charger fan base. And it ain't stopping now. Well, I mean, look at us yesterday. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. We're growing, dude. We're, ta- we're taking over stadiums. We're dude, still getting home field advantage everywhere. Arizona, awesome. like I'm so bummed I wasn't there. But to see how me- how much powder blue is there, yeah. Hearing the Charger fan roar when like Derwin James got the interception, it, you could have swore we were at home. Yeah, you know, and it's crazy because it was always the other way around. Yeah, like, last year, this time last year, we were talking about how we were. Everyone on ESPN was talking about how we were getting overrun, and I think a yeah. lot of what you do and getting these people all over the world and all over the country together with Die Hard Bolt Club and everything you do, there's a reason why this thing's growing, man. And and we're getting these fans that are willing to travel, are willing to do, you know, that live in the town to host people that are traveling. It's really fantastic. Amazing to see. Um, I said yesterday in Arizona, I think that was the first taste of what the vision that we're trying to do here with Die Hard Bolt Club, because the previous areas that we went to, like, don't get me wrong, shout out to Atlanta. They did amazing. Uh, the chapters aren't as big yet. So there wasn't, like, what happened in Arizona. Yeah, there was a Thunder where, Alley in Arizona, dude. There was dude, crazy it was like pictures. A yeah. Uh, you know, Bull Pride came together with uh, Nick, our president out in Arizona, and they put together something amazing from what I've heard. The meeting group was amazing. Uh, we legit took over the stadium. So yeah. that was what the goal is, you know, uh, what I've talked about in this podcast before that we want to make sure that every time our Charger fan goes somewhere, they have a home. And to see that yesterday come to fruition was beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's exciting, man. We're, we're so happy and pumped that you're our fan of the year and you got to come share your experience and we can't wait to, you know, live vicariously through your social medias and, you know, we can all feel like fan of the year with you through that. So we really appreciate your time, Enrique. And honestly, we are all the fan of the year because as cliche as that sounds, this wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for you guys getting the word out there for DHPC, uh, you know, the DHPC members for doing all their hard work. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, like I say, I'll, I say it to my members, I'm just the face cause I'm the president, but they're the ones that put in the hard work, you know, nothing would be possible if they wouldn't put in that effort and put in, cause none of us get paid for it. So for them to have that passion and love for the club and the chargers is what makes all this possible. Absolutely. So I shout out to all the charger fans, all the people on Twitter, you guys die hard bowl club. Cause this wouldn't be possible without you guys. So. Awesome, bro. I know it's cliche, but I mean that. <laughs> all day, man. We're hey, we're living vicariously through you, and we can't wait to see all the cool stuff you got coming up of fan of the year. And um, yeah, man, we'll we will talk to you super soon. Thank you so much for your time, Enrique.
Of course, man. Thank you. All right, brother. And feel better. We'll get better. Appreciate it. Yeah. Let's go, buddy. I need to get better for the games coming up. Let's, so let's go. All right, brother. We'll talk to you later. Talk to you soon. Well, what a heck of a story for Crazy. for Rike. That is so and dude, you absolutely deserve yeah. to be fan of the year. It only happens once a year. It's only one person that gets it. And for the guy to get it to be someone who has invested as much time and energy helping to build this fan base to the point that there's chapters overseas. Yeah. I'm seeing pictures of the Die Hard Bolt Club in Germany. Yeah. In Germany, these guys are waving the Die Hard Bolt Club flag. And it's happening because of leaders like Rike. Yeah. And Rike absolutely deserves every bit of this. What an absolute just like <laughs> just a surprise to have them going through all these steps. And for everybody, nobody spilled the beans. Yeah. Nobody they're, was like, oh, yeah, you're the winner, right? Nobody told you? Like, what? <laughs> there, it's very much like, you've seen the movie The Sting. Like, there's like yes. the, the fake walls move in and out. And it's like, there's yeah. this whole, like, they had a big meeting about how they were going to play play that up and uh, mislead him. So. Everybody was in on the meeting. It yeah. was like, all right, nobody nobody tell them. Yeah. And then Camera they all guy come Mike, in, mission don't of, tell him. Mission Impossible. They pull their faces off. It's <laughs> right. Justin Herbert, like that kind of thing. Derwin James comes down from the ceiling. <laughs> he <blows down. laughs> catches a sweat with his. Good... <laughs> yeah. oh, that's too good. Oh man, um, that is just such an awesome story, dude. And again, it couldn't happen to a better, a nicer guy uh, than Rike. So thank you so much, Rike, for coming thanks, on and thanks, telling brother. Kev your story, buddy. Because. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait for I can't wait to see what happens with the with the diehard bowl club and, going forward and go vote for him too because you he can become like the fan of the year not just for the right Chargers. not just the Charger fan of the year the fan of go, the year let's go vote for him man let let's yes. get him let's get him that because he deserves it and you know we take dubs man we like wins you know yeah. all across the board and he deserves it and we want him to have that so go vote and don't hesitate to reach out to Rike if you're interested in joining the diehard bowl club. If there's a chapter near you, he's going to point you to it. If you're interested in starting a chapter, he's going to tell you how to do it. And he will take the time to absolutely do it. And that's what makes him so awesome. Absolutely. Rike, again, thank you so much for coming on and chatting with Kev. Um, let's move it on now to the next segment. It is Fan Focus. Yes. Fred. All right, guys, we are back with another Fan Focus. And we are super lucky to have Fred from Baltimore. What is going on, Fred? Hey, Kev, not a whole lot. I'm pumped from last night's game still. I'm assuming I, everybody listening to your show will be too. Ah, uh, man, I'm just like floating. I've been floating around all day. <laughs> like nothing's getting me down. It's like walking on sunshine. Oh, that's been playing in my head all day. So I'm glad to have you on a victory uh, Monday. Me um, too. Let's kick this off, man. Um, how did you become a Charger fan? Well, I've got bits and pieces actually from some of your previous um uh, guess, but I, I'll tell you straight up, it wasn't from playing Madden. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was a Charger fan before Madden even existed. Actually, I, I gave it, I had to think on it for a minute, and it would have been 1973. Um, and I was a kid. I was in middle school. We were all standing, me and all the boys were standing around the hall one day, and somebody asked me, said, Fred, who's your favorite team? And you know what? I liked football. I was playing JV football, but I didn't have a, a favorite team. So I thought, I, you know, that's a lot of pressure for a teenager. I got to get one. Yeah. So I started uh, kind of a, a search, like I asked my dad who he liked. And uh, everybody was Redskin fans where I was at. It was I, would grow, I was growing up in a small town in Virginia, and they were good. The skins were good back then. They had uh, Billy Kilmer, I remember, Sonny Jurgensen, Larry Brown. Charlie Taylor. I mean, they, they were good, but I wasn't really a follow the crowd kind of guy. I never yeah. was. I'm still not. So that year I saw, uh, we, we got one, one early game and one late game on the TV and my dad and I watched football every Sunday and I saw the chargers play the Redskins. I think it was the, and then the Redskins were on cause that was a local team. First game of the year and the chargers got, thumped it was bad it was like 38 to nothing I, I think or something but it was the year don't quote me on this I think it was the year Johnny Unitas went to the Chargers and he was their starting quarterback and as an impressionable 13 year old kid everybody knew who Johnny Unitas was and 
So I, I put them on the list. I had a couple teams on the list. I said, well, I like Johnny Unitas. And uh, not a very impressive start, though. But So then a couple, two, three weeks later, they were on again playing the Steelers. Steelers was another big regional team. And uh, I hope I get this right. At halftime, they took Johnny Unitas out because he was not good. He was not looking good. And they brought in this cat named Dan Fouts. And they were losing that game. I want to say it was 38 to nothing at half. And Fouts brought him back, brought him back, brought him back. He threw like – he was throwing the ball all over the field. He, I think he scored three touchdowns. They still lost the game. But that that was it. I said, all right, um, I like this Johnny Unitas guy, obviously, and I love this what I see out of this uh, this new guy, Dan Fouts. And there was one other tie, too. Um, <clears throat> my football team that I was going to play for in the next year or two, their their title, their name still is, was the Blue Streaks. And their helmet looked damn near exactly like that white helmet you have up on your wall there. Yeah. But it, yeah, it was blue. So I thought, well, it looks like the same uniform. So even 50 years ago, people were attracted to the Chargers uniforms. You know, it's just it's yeah. just a cool uniform. But uh, so that's how I became a Charger fan back in um, – you couldn't follow them on ESPN or yeah. I, I got the newspaper and looked up the scores and the stats in the paper and you would see highlights and stuff. And people were talking about them um, because they were just throwing the ball all over the place compared to a lot of other NFL teams. Back in, it was run the ball, pound the ball. And I think that year Fouts broke all kind of records passing the ball. I'm pretty sure he passed Namath that year. Um, but no, no, that wasn't 73. That was, that was 78, but, uh, that's how I became Charger fan. I've been one ever since, um, all the highs, all the lows, yeah. uh, I'm but I wouldn't take it back for nothing. It's an entertaining team when you think back and I didn't make a list, but you know, a, a, a fan, very few fans follow multiple teams. I follow the Chargers. So I can't speak to really all the great guys that played for the Steelers or all the great guys that, that played in, in Green Bay. But when you look back over the history of the great guys that have played for that franchise, it's it's an easy team to to be a fan of. Sure. Um, if, if you're just one Super Bowls and and records and, you know, I, what do they call that, a fair weather fan? Um, yeah. No. No, that's that's cool. That's that's it's so interesting that you know you came in with Fouts and then you know jump ahead a little ways. We have another Oregon Duck, um, yeah. and this is a great segue into last night. Justin Herbert, man, what does it feel like to like you know sit down, get, kick your feet up, and watch Justin Herbert do his thing against the Dolphins? Well, do you remember? I know you do. You remember the Jacksonville game where we did we came out and we didn't play very well? Yeah. Early in the game, I thought Miami was doing a lookalike. I, I was like, where are these guys at? You know, Tua couldn't get anything going. And I haven't followed Miami. I just heard the, the week leading up to it, how prolific their offense is. And he's like the best passer rating in the NFL. And he couldn't do anything. He couldn't do anything. No. And so I kept, and then, you know, what well, is first half, that stupid play with, uh, um, he'll taking the ball back. 60 yeah, the points. weirdest fumble of all time. Yeah, even when that happened, I still felt okay. Just the way the game flow was going. I thought these guys are in a funk. Staley's got these boys ready to play tonight. There was something, I don't know. I don't even want to bring it up, but I don't know if the Tua thing was in Justin's ear or what, but he was possessed. He fired night. up. I mean, he was he was smoking last night, and I really liked um, you know some of the criticalness uh, of the offense here for the last you know twelve weeks is that Justin just getting pounded in the pocket. I mean, he was out of the pocket like cat last night. Yeah, and you could tell it wasn't like he was. I heard guys today saying he was running for his life. Nah, it was designed. I mean, he was letting he was letting the corners crash, the ends crash. And then he was rolling right around into yeah. finding some free real estate. And he was throwing dimes last night. I mean, you know, that it seems like every time he plays, we always say that 
that was the greatest pass I ever saw. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? um, and I last night, the one that really stuck out to me, it, it was still kind of a tense game late in the game, and he hit – he hit Keenan on a ball that he shouldn't have even thrown. I mean, no. the guy that that out on the sideline. Yeah, I think yeah. the guy had his hand in Keenan's pocket, and and after the game, I heard one of the announcers asking Keenan about how great that throw was from Justin, and it was. But he didn't even ask Keenan about the catch. I mean, yeah, it's an amazing freaking catch. I, yeah. I thought. I thought it was one of the best catches of the night for sure. And, and maybe one of the better ones I've ever seen. It wasn't a 80 yard bomb or anything like that, but we needed that first down. Yeah. And that drive was like what? Nine minutes long or something. They, how they many of them the clock off? For how that many of them have you seen this year? Not, not a whole lot. I mean, they were, they were moving the ball really well last night. I, I'm glad my wife, I watch TV in the basement. She's sleeping in the upstairs, so there's really like two floors between. Some sound buffer, some yeah. little room there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's a good thing. Because <laughs> yeah. I was doing, I was, you know, pumping my fists and screaming and yelling. It was, it was a great game. It was, we played a good game. Um, so, and last week, I'm so glad I'm talking this week because last week I, I had told you in the original email that we should know who we are. By, yeah. by the end of this um, Dolphins game. And if you'd have interviewed me last week, I'm not sure I knew who we were. You sure. know, we were six and six, and the freaking Raiders beat us, and we yeah. didn't look good at all. And then we come out this week, and the narrative that all of us Chargers fans like to speak to, it's like, hey, we're going to get some guys back. Justin's got his weapons. They could get hot. I think we've won – Three games in a row was our best run this year, not yeah, against three. a lot of very talented teams. Miami's a talented team. Uh, sure. they, they may have been in a funk. I don't know, but we beat them. Sure, and sure. everybody will tell you we beat them. And I can't wait to hear. I'd look for it today, that clown. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know how he's going to spin that because Justin looked good. He, he was clearly the best guy, best player on the field last night. Yeah. Undisputed, Every, undisputed. Everyone was, you know, you know, the praises were showering down on him for sure during the broadcast. And it's just exciting when your quarterback is playing that way. It's just, it's just kind of this different feeling you get. Like there's just like any, we can do anything. That's kind of the Absolutely. feeling I had the, at the yeah. second half of that game. Like even though we didn't get, um, when we got in the red zone, things weren't going that well for us. I still feel like we could do pretty much anything we wanted. Now that it's really those two guys, you get Keenan and Mike back it just changes the whole dynamic and everyone gets kind of pissed off. Like we should be able to do it without all these injuries. Like the fact that we're six and six is because of Justin Herbert, because any other quarterback in that position, I don't think is, is executing the way he had been leading up to last night. Yeah, I agree. Uh, they did some stupid little graphic last night about the injuries on the chargers, but th they showed like five. Yeah. And if we, we need went the down, full list, it would be like yeah. the Star Wars scroll, scrolling credits yeah. of all if, of our guys. If you went through that list and what they meant to this team, or at least in, in the preseason hype, what we thought they were going to mean to this team, yeah. um, it's really hard, I think, to judge where we're at. Because on one side, it's like, shit, we, we could be like one in 12 right now, you sure. know, two and two and 11 or something. Um, I get the next man up, and I, I believe that when JC and when Bosa went down, I thought, okay, we got to find a way. And then Slater goes down. You think they did the, you saw it, they did some 100 top players in the yeah. NFL. NFL top 100. And that's who we're losing. We're, we're not it's losing. our best. Yeah. Yeah. We're not losing, you know, a guy that maybe was, you know, a, a Gilman or somebody like that that we could easily replace. But um, so, yeah, I think last night, Really, when I when I said it, we should know who we are, I don't know who we are. We showed glimpses last night of our narrative could come could come to fruition. You know, yeah. we could get some guys back. We beat up on uh, Tennessee this week, and then who knows? I, I'm not going to say we went out, but I like our chances a lot better after that showing last night 100%. than I did after the Raiders game. 
It's a great, all amazing points. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on board with that. I'm excited for what this next week's going to be and moving forward. And we don't know who we are yet, but we have four games to figure it out because that right after that is hopefully we're in the playoffs. So let's figure it out now. Um, but let's uh, let's get you out of here on this, Fred, man. I, you have you've been a fan since the you know the '70s. You got to tell me, man, what is your you know your your favorite Charger memory? All right, um, we're gonna. I thought about this a lot this week, Kevin, because yeah, I have been a fan a long time, and I actually I struggled with it more than I should have. I thought, well, I really got to pick, you know, just that one greatest moment. And then I said to hell with it. No, nah, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a few. Okay. I'll go through them pretty quick because I know time's kind of a thing. And then at the end, if you were to force my hand, I want you to guess okay. which one you think might might be my my number one. They uh sign me up. They showed one of them last night and they did not do justice to it. And it was uh the epic in Miami. Now I watched that game live as a Charger fan. I was probably in my 20s or something. And do yourself a favor and your fans, if you ever, like after the Raiders game, yeah, I went back and watched the 15-minute highlights of that game. There you go. It's just comforting. It makes you feel well, better. It, it was a game that really, and it was, it was the Dolphins. It was a game neither one of those teams should have lost. They both played their hearts out. We were crushing them in the first quarter. And – the buildup before the game was here come the Chargers, this high-powered offense, and and Miami was young. It was Shula versus Coriel, but their defense was tough. And we're up twenty-one nothing in the first quarter. And then, in typical Charger fashion, twenty years ago, you know, we let them yeah. we let them crawl back in it. It goes into overtime. Uh, we miss a field goal in overtime. They miss a field goal in overtime. And and then we win that game, and they're literally. I remember last year they were talking about how Mike Will was spent at the end of that Raiders game. Yeah, watch a video at the end of this game, and they're literally dragging people off the field. So yeah, that that's one of them. Okay. And then uh, another one was in 1982. It was a really weird year. That was the strike year. Um, I remember seeing a game they they nationally televised it with Fouts play in San Francisco or Chargers play in San Francisco. And you're watching this game, Kevin, and it's just, I can't remember a single run play. Fouts threw for 400. Montana threw for 400. They threw for over 800 yards in that game. And just imagine a game with 800 air yards. And we we won the game. Um, what was it? It was 41 to 37 or something like that, I think. The next Next week, we went into Cincinnati, and the year – that was significant because, I believe, the year before, San Francisco and Cincy was in the Super Bowl, and we beat the Thunder out of Cincinnati the next week. 50-34 to 34 was the score. Yeah. So that whole year looked really promising because it was, it was really short, and I forget how many total games we played. They cut a bunch of games out of that season – but uh, in the first round, we went to Pittsburgh, and we were pretty heavy underdogs. Pittsburgh had one of their monster teams, and they were going to beat us down in Pittsburgh. And we were down in the fourth quarter, 28-17. And Fouts put together a couple drives. He made a play on fourth down. We went down last minute of the game and we won it 38 to 21. And I was going nuts. I mean, I, I think anybody as a Chargers fan was going nuts. Yeah. And the next week it keeps coming back. We lost the next week to the Dolphins. And so there's a damn Dolphins again. Yeah. Oh, next one, real quick, 2006 favorite season, a trigger season for a lot of Chargers. LT was running over everybody. He ran. That's the year he set the touchdown record, 28 yeah. touchdowns. I think it still holds. I mean, r- rushing touchdowns. Yeah. He's so many it. different records, like rushing and like Eckler's got running and passing. But uh, what was what was unique about that was, or at least as, as I remember it, they stopped the game. The offensive linemen picked LT up on their shoulders. When's the last time you saw a player in the middle of a game get carried off on people's shoulders? 
So although there, there's a season there, the real win for me in that year was just LT. I, I think he was MVP and set the total rushing yards and those 28 touchdowns. Then this one, I've never heard any of your um, guests pull this one out, but in 2007 started the uh, the Rivers-Cutler feud, and yeah. I saw one of those games. And, Kevin, if they did that crap today, they'd be throwing <laughs> unsportsmanlike <laughs> conduct. So, I mean, Cutler yeah. was standing on the field grabbing his junk and yeah. flipping off the sidelines. And <clears throat> everybody knows Rivers doesn't – he doesn't swear – but he was into it, man. He was I mean, close. He was close he, to dropping an F-bomb on that one. He, he was in Cutler's ass now. <laughs> and there's a, there's a clip. I, I'll go out and find it for you where um, Cutler threw a pit, pick six. And Rivers is high-stepping down the sidelines, just going nuts, you know. Yeah. So that they downplayed that afterwards. But um, since I was at one of those games, that one always stuck with me and – um, my first game, I'm almost done real quick. My first game was in 2009 and that was in Qualcomm. Awesome. And it was the first time ever I was around a bunch of Chargers fans. And it was so cool for me. I mean, there were Charger logos on the back of people's cars. I was tailgating with them and it was, uh, it was a great game. Rivers threw for over 400 yards. Sproles ran for 120 and I didn't know anything about Qualcomm. I thought I bought these great seats, but it was on the Raven side. And I was sitting there the whole game looking in the back of the heads of the Ravens players. I was <laughs> like in the third row. And, you know, I thought it would be like a concert. If you're in the third row, you got great seats. Yeah. I couldn't see anything. So I walked up into the mezzanine area and watched most of the game. We lost that game. Um, what do we, 30? 31 to 26, I think. It's still a great experience for me. It's one of my my first Charger game. You know, I wasn't a virgin anymore. So that's awesome. And then my last one, this one I I'm not uh copycat, but it's just one of mine because several of your other fans have said this one. Yeah. You could probably even guess it. 2018 when Philip threw that pass to, yeah. to Mike for the two-point conversion in the Nothing end zone like four that. seconds left. If you go back, I go back and watch that one sometimes too, just to look at the look on Mahomes' face. He couldn't believe it. Yeah. Mike Williams is is high stepping it across the field. And I, you know, it's just a great moment, I think, in Charger history because the Chiefs have been beating up on us and Lynn wasn't having that great of a tenure. Yeah. It was kind of like the hell with it. I'm I'm going for it. We're gonna win this game and get out of here. So so that's my All that's right. my fifth. 50 years part down. I love it. You're, so I get to guess tall. now. So you I'm going to go guess. based on the fact that when you feel bad and you need to cheer yourself up a little bit, you go back and watch the Epic in Miami. My guess is Epic in Miami. That is my favorite memory. Um, yes. My second favorite one. If you would have guessed it, I'd have probably told you you were right. Somehow that vision of LT on his lineman's shoulders yeah. holding that ball it's the rudy moment it's the well, carrying him off the field deal it is you just i believe and maybe i'm wrong people debate me i think lt was the greatest running back there ever was he could do anything yeah and when you watch those old videos it reminds me of watching the game on tv live but every time we'd hand the ball off to him, the whole crowd would just come alive. Anything was I mean, possible. He hadn't even crossed the line of scrimmage yet. Yeah. You know, he, he was just in a phenomenal player for us for so long. And that, that 2006 season was pretty special for him yeah. and for Chargers fans. So yeah. That's well, a good are, guess. Those are those are awesome memories. And it was absolutely a pleasure meeting you, Fred. And and thank you so much for coming on and sharing all that with us. And uh we really appreciate your time, man. Pleasure is all mine, Kevin. Take care. You too, man. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Fred, I could I could just sit there and chat with you about Chargers for hours, buddy. <laughs> all that was day. all day, every day. That was so fun, dude. And I love I love the the introduction to the game. I'm shocked it wasn't Madden, Fred. I'll be I'm honest. Yeah, I know with you. in the 70s. In the I'm 70s, right. that's what every kid had. They had Madden. Atari Madden. How you, know you know couldn't I mean? be that guy, I have no idea. But <laughs> yeah. uh for to get to to have your attention drawn to the team because of Johnny Unitas and then to fall in love with the team again, because of the uniforms and Dan Fouts coming in and playing the way that he did. 
uh, that's pretty special. That's, I it's, mean, not a lot of people I, can say that. I kind of, there's an interesting, I didn't realize the story that he got, the United's got pulled and they put Fouts in. Uniquely similar to what happened with Justin. I was thinking, oh, or, really? really? I, that wasn't what I was thinking. What were you thinking? I was thinking Drew Brees and Phil Rivers. Oh. Because people would have been drawn to Chargers going like, oh, Drew Brees, he's a hell of a quarterback. But then in comes this guy, Philip Rivers, who says, uh-uh, this is, this is my turn. So that's interesting now that there's been three, at least three, there might be more iterations of, An wow, look at this great quarterback. by a stud. By a, a Charger stud. all-timer. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that is pretty interesting. And that, and again, dude, I, I, I love the, the rich history that you have with the Chargers. And, and it is about, it, it, like you said, it's, it's not about the wins. It's not about the Super Bowls. Obviously, we want these guys to win a Super Bowl. We want this team to get one. Uh, but you j- there's just such good guys, yeah. guys that you can fall in love with, guys that you when you hear about the history of these guys and you look further in and get to know them better, that is what's so awesome about this team and why we love this team. So. Amen, brother. Fred, thank you again so much Thanks, for coming Fred. on and giving us such a great conversation with Kev. Um, all right, gang, it's time to go on to the next segment. Ask both fam. Let me get my oxygen tank. Hang on. <laughs> time to put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> Hi, guys. Don't jam a thumb up his butt. Oh, that's what you do. <laughs> I wet myself in excitement. Oh, so hungry. Your thoughts are like totally appreciated. <laughs> Catch you later, dude. Good luck, you boy. That's right, folks. It is time for Ask Bolt Fam. Uh, we start this one off with Humboldt County Fan. Let's go. Who asked the question? Oh. Great f***ing win to get the tiebreaker with a wild card rival team. And we're totally making the playoffs if we keep winning. Because over the next four weeks, the Jets, Dolphins, and Patriots are all going to circle drunk each other into oblivion. <laughs> I just have to say that Tua looked like absolute garbage today. Maybe he still has double vision from all these concussions because I don't know who the f- he was throwing to most of the time. Hoo-ha. Well, Herbert <laughs> played what might have been the best game of his career. So great to have Mike and Keenan on the field at the same time. It made all the difference, especially on third down. Hoo-ha. And how about the amazing job our banged up defense did? I didn't know if JC Jackson is ever going to play football again, but if he does, I think we might have a real cornerback conversation, controversy with the way Fato is playing. He straight up locked down Tyreek Hill. He ran stride for stride with him the entire game, including the touchdown pass where the feet got tangled. It was right there. And it would have intercepted that pass. <laughs> the whole defensive backfield was amazing. And how about the job for Hoko did or oh, clogging up the running lanes? <laughs> oh, this was about the biggest example of next man up I've ever seen from a team so bad with injuries. With Bosa and hopefully Derwin coming back for the Titans this week, we might finally have the defense we have been waiting for to go along with our defensive weapons, our offensive weapons, excuse me. (laughs) This is definitely the most optimistic I've been since week one. Oh, yeah. And f*** the Raiders, who are now completely irrelevant, (laughs) and the Donkeys have the second worst record in football and have to give their first round pick to Seattle. Bull fam, let's ride. (laughs) Hoo-ha. The hoo-haws are just uh, just too funny. Oh, Oh, big man. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I agree with everything. I agree with everything, too. I don't see a question in there, but uh, there was a lot. You made made a lot of great points there, Humboldt County. I'm I'm glad people are getting excited. Like, you know. (laughs) Yeah. Get excited again because that's what our team can look like and be like. And we can we can still get better. We can still right. get better in the red zone and we can still get some of these guys back. So we'll Absolutely. See. Yeah. And uh to see and that we didn't talk about that. To see that Denver is gone. Mathematically eliminated, my friend. And you did it by giving up so many picks to get Russell freaking Wilson. Yeah. And now true. Seattle is gonna have a top five pick. Because of your can you confidence? Can you believe that they're gonna have like a maybe the top the second pick in the draft? It's insane. That That's is crazy. so crazy. That's got to be the biggest like the the worst trade for a team and the best trade for a team of Ever. all time. 
ever. Ah, uh, so good. Humboldt yeah. County fan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's move it on now to FSF. Spanos forever. <laughs> so <serve> my fresh. <laughs> Who asked the question? So we just saw Eric Fisher sign with the Miami this week. Question. For a Chargers team who clearly has been struggling for offensive line help and gone two to four in the last six games, in large part because we, our O-line, looks as functional as Sam and trying to swim in an elevator. <laughs> Why didn't we sign Ode Abushi, Eric Fisher, or Brian Bulaga? especially when it was so clear after the bye week that offensive line was in need. And at that point, it's not like we're needing them for 17 games, just the second half. O'Day is now with the Rams, Eric obviously with the Finns, and Brian is still a free agent, I think. Was it a salary cap hit? Didn't we still have money left over from the offseason? Any of those guys would have been better than Will Clapp, Foster Sorrell, Storm Norton, or Brendan Hymas, especially since it's clear to Herbert and to the coaching staff that those three guys couldn't stop a snail and don't belong in the NFL. So to preface this, this was a question that was sent three days ago, so not okay. not irrelevant. It didn't it, quite have like the... I know, right? It didn't have the, hey, I, we won, level. but why don't we yeah. have more help? Um, no, the, but it, this came yeah. in a few days prior to the game. Um, I, you know, I didn't even notice what Eric Fisher, I, I, what his grade was. Did he even play? I don't even no, know. He hasn't played in a while. I don't know. I didn't even see him. Did I didn't notice, honestly, I didn't whatever notice. it was, obviously it wasn't enough to win the game. No. <laughs> and, well, and the reason why I, the only thing you could say is you bring in a, a right tackle, right? Mm -hmm. And they clearly feel like Trey Pipkins is close. So you're not going to bring in somebody upset the entire line, you know, the line room. When mm -hmm. you when you feel strongly that Trey Pippins is going to come back, plus there's a chance now we're hearing that um, we'll get Slater back. So right. I think that was you know everyone when this was sent was like, oh god, we need something to help Herbert. Right? And, yeah. When you've got like, Will Clapp, Foster, and and Salier on your sides, like, yeah. Hey, I think we need to. <laughs> maybe I, we should get somebody. <laughs> I do think we need to draft a center to back up Corey and learn from him next year. I think that's going to be sure. something that needs some to be good done. depth on center is yeah. not a bad thing. Just keep doing first and second round picks on the offensive line. Just keep doing it all day. Yeah. That's it. That's all we got to do. And then yeah. try and stay healthy. Yeah. I would love to see an offensive line that can give Herbert like three, four seconds before having to huck the ball. Could you like, imagine the Could you production imagine would be the laser insane. beams. It'd be out of control. It'd yeah. Be, he'd be setting records on top of the records. He's already set. He'd be breaking his own records. Right. And also, I mean, the talk of Trey Pipkins coming back, I think, is obviously pretty big. And and the scheming was different this week. I mean, we still had Foster Sorrell at the right tackle and didn't do an amazing job. But when you're yeah. scheming for Herbert to get out of the pocket and scramble and make some big, deep tosses to give him some few extra seconds, uh, it works. So, you know, we're at least now seeing the coaching staff go, OK, obviously, we can't run the same game plan with, you know, yeah. the starting offensive line that we had last year with three backups in the same game that can't be the same offensive scheme. So yeah. let's schedule or let's scheme differently. And this is the production that we kind of get. So yep, pretty uh, much. it works. Uh, but FSF Spanos forever. Thank you. For Welcome. Asking the question. <laughs> uh, let's move it on now to Staley's nuts and bolts. All right. All right. Who asked the question? Miami Dolphins. Uh, what happened? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Two is not that good, uh, and our defense played well. Not, uh, uh, yeah, uh, -huh. uh, 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 -huh. <laughs> uh, I, I was as shocked as everyone else. Everybody like, was shocked. The first half was like, what is going on? Where has this team been? Like, what is like the question, too, is also people have brought it up today, which is interesting is like the scheming when you have Derwin James. Is that messing with other things and putting them in positions and getting them on the line? And when we just played this more straightforward and not having that key piece, like, is he being used the most effective way possible? Um, it's a great question. It's hard because it's a small sample size. Right. So it's it's hard to say exactly. Mm -hmm. but yeah. It's something it, to think about. It's something to think about. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, going into this game, everybody's nervous. And it's when you, again, and we saw the Chargers defer, which, We'd like to see them come out and get a lead early. So when the deferred happened, it's like, Still okay. didn't help us at all. Well, it was half. just like, all right, Finns are going to get the ball, start it off. Let's, and oh God, this One, defense. One, two, three, out. 
Yeah, you get a three and out, like, oh, oh, oh. okay. Oh. So Alohi Gilman on Tyreek Hill and Mike Davis on Tyreek Hill. They can't get the ball to Tyreek Hill in three and out. Okay. Oh, so but then the next possession comes up. They're like, okay, here we go. We're going to try to do it again. Finally see our defense. And another three and out. And it was just yeah. like, wait. What's happening? We have a chance here. So I, props to the defense, man. The defense really set the tone early and maintained it pretty much all through game. the game. So the, the, that that is dude, the two fluke plays are the only reasons why they had any points. Yeah. Yeah. That the tangling up with, you know, Vato tangling up and letting that touchdown happen yeah. to Ty, to Tyree Kill and then the weirdest fumble of all time happens. Yeah. Um so you just like think when that happened we were all just like, all right, well, there's nothing you can really get upset yeah, about you're just with like, that. That's uh, just shit luck so hopefully he doesn't come back to bite us in the ass it felt like a 90s sitcom where it's like so that just happened <laughs> and then you hear a laugh track of like yeah. an audience so that just happened. <laughs> and then you hear the sign fail <laughs> <laughs> um yeah but oh, hey shit. we won staley's nuts and bolts that's what happened thank you for asking right. the question uh let's move it on now to die hard bolts fan who asked the question? Who is Stone Smart? LOL, I turned to my nephews and said, I have no idea who that is. Certified fresh question. Um, impressed with that one. Welcome. Yes, um, welcome. I also, it was just like two games ago, I was like, oh shit, yeah, I forgot that we have that tight end. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to remember where we got him. It, I think it was an off-season signing. I it don't... was something like that. Yeah, it was like a, it was. He might have been an undrafted free agent, and I think we picked him up and held on to him or put him on the practice squad or something like that. It was something weird like that. Because we didn't draft him. I know that much. Mm-hmm. We didn't draft him, but somehow we ended up with him, and somehow he, and he had made a catch. catch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so well, he I, contributed. He, he won't, you know, as soon as Donald Parham's back, that yes. he'll, he won't be there, but I, I really want Donald Parham back. But Stone Smart, too. welcome. Welcome yes. for a couple catches. This Absolutely. Season. And welcome, diehard Bolts fan. Thank yeah. you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Tom Telesco's burner account. Oh, shit. Who asked the question? That was the best win of Staley's career, man. What a game plan. He had Aucho looking like a total clown he is. I saw a crazy stat where Herb threw for more completions than that guy had tackles in his whole career. Enough about him and more about Staley. He might have saved his damn job, man. I've been on the fence with him for a while more, so lately on the wrong side of the fence. Uh, This was a statement win, man. 217 total yards given up and only 17 points allowed to a quality offense. If he can stack more of these defensive game plans together, I'd want to keep him over Peyton. I want to see him shut down a quality rush offense like the Titans next week. Keep the urgency, Staley. Okay, love you guys, man. Bye. Oh, yeah. Also, that wildcat with Eckler and Kelly was tight. More of that, please. I just love when we win. It, just the questions, the energy. Like, <laughs> no I want to fire him. I'm cool now. We're cool now. All We're right. Tight. Yeah, all right. He's... He's all right this week, but yeah, I I respect it. I hear what you're saying. <laughs> Absolutely, it's I'm, easy I'm, to. I'm glad that he stepped up and did what we all hoped he would do with the defense. So right, we that knew that this was a refreshing. game that they had to come out with a good, solid game plan. Gotta and be good. The guys have to execute said game plan, and mm-hmm. everybody, for the most part, did. I mean, yeah. there were very few mistakes, and again, Herbert having a career of again breaking a record. Yeah, I wish I wish I could t- talk to you a little bit more about how our defense played on third down, um, but I didn't watch any of those. That was <laughs> that's so I didn't I didn't have I don't have too much insight on what happened on third down because uh, we tried something at the beginning of the game and it worked. It for I, I would say about eighty to ninety percent of the time it worked. Every I think time. there was maybe one down that it didn't quite work. So yeah. we have our own system so i just like i don't look at the tv yes. i just look at adam and, and i, I wait give for him adam. a straight face and i either give him a or a and so but it's like the, <laughs> the excitement on his face makes me jack because then i get to see the play happen like the replay happen the immediately replay yeah so it's like i feel like i'm a happier person that i didn't see the, <laughs> the damage um all right well there you go tom telesco's burner account thank you for asking the question bud let's move it on now to landon sumner landon who asked the question no bosa no pipkins no slater no bash no johnson no callahan and no mother darwin james it doesn't matter because justin herbert is him 
This is the Chargers team we all have been wanting to see all year. Defense playing their asses off and the deadly combo of Mike, Will, and Keenan Allen show us once again why they're a top five wide receiver duo in the league. Not going to lie, boys, my hope has been somewhat restored. And even if we lose to the Titans next week, I'm confident we can make a playoff push. My question is, did anyone's balls get sucked back into their bodies when Palmer fumbled the onside kick? Thank you, Nick Neiman, for being the savior of special teams. Go Bolts, f*** the Raiders, and let's make the playoff push, boys. Well said. Well, well said. said, yes. Yeah, balls disappeared for about 10 seconds, and then they reappeared. Because um, that was scary. <laughs> that was really scary. Well, yeah, because we saw the ball. It went right to Palmer, and... He didn't get it. Uh, <laughs> it just was all over the place. It was popcorn and everybody jumped on it. And Neiman, thank God thank Neiman God. came in. Yeah, just slid right in there, grabbed it and b- <laughs> balled up and just held on to that sweet, sassy molassy. But yeah, it's again, having Keenan and Mike out there, man. It's that is such a difference. People want to people want to talk about like the we need to be able to do this with other running wide receivers. Like they're just not, there's no other wide receivers like them. Right. Man. It's just different. The drop off different between Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and, and even Palmer is, is vast. It's considerable. Big. It's considerable. I mean, just like the difference between the starting offensive line and the backups, like Herbert can get the ball to them. Like we've seen great catches from Deandre Cotter and Josh and Josh Palmer sure. in Allen and Williams's absence. But, it, it having those guys out there just makes all the difference. I mean, just for size alone for Mike Williams. Those, that, he, ju- that first jump ball he had, dude, yes. was crazy. Yes. I mean, they just, they have the chemistry with Herbert. And I think a lot has to be said for that. Yeah. You know, DeAndre Carter and, and these other guys like Michael Bandy and and even Josh Palmer, like they, they probably worked with Herbert, but like in the off season, probably didn't catch many passes in the same sense that, you know, Herbert's rookie season, like he's not thrown to the number ones, he's thrown to the number two. So yeah, he built a chemistry with those guys. But now in his third season, he's got the chemistry with Keenan Allen. He's got the chemistry with Mike Williams. And when you take those two away, you lose that uh that trust, I guess, or knowing like I know that he's gonna go right here or he's gonna I can go just right here. Throw this up 25, 30 yards down the field. And he's probably going to catch it. And not even he, that. I, he can, like, the throw to Keenan Allen. He's like, I know I can throw a dot. And if I just hit that dot, I know he's going to catch it. Yeah. And it's just, it it goes on both sides. So, again, having those guys out there makes all Huge. the difference in the world. And, uh, yeah, we, we've we got a push to make uh, right now. Push it. Push it real good. Do, 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 do. Push Landon Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for asking the question, but let's move it on now to House of Hain. Yeah. Who asked the question? Well, I say, I say that was a win. We all knew was coming. Once uh once we got 81 back, we didn't need Taco Bell before the game and kept the sheets clean. I say <laughs> the D was giving it to the fans. The only very small crit was not scoring in the red zone. What did you guys think? I say, what did you guys think of Collins were giving the fins praise all game? And that ass, I say, I say, asshole doing the lights out <laughs> dance. Major diss right there. I say, should be taken out back and given the what for, if you know what I mean. K, I say, K, love you, bye. Who did the lights out dance? I'm I not- kind of missed that. I, I, people were tweeting at us that it happened. I missed it. Um, that's disrespect. That's like the 2006 game where we lost in the playoffs and... It was, was it a Dolphins guy that did it? Yeah. The Dolphins oh, I, did, I must like, have missed it out. then. Yeah, I missed it. I'm not going to go back and look at it. But yeah, but this was probably, it was probably a moment of like, either like, oh God, or like a celebration where we had our eyes closed for a second. I mean, you must have missed it. For sure. Um, but yeah. Um, it's okay. But yeah, <laughs> Collinsworth sucks. He's Collinsworth just the worst. The- I said it to you. I'm like, why are they going over highlights for the Dolphins when they're losing right now? Like, Chargers are winning. How about yeah. show some of those highlights? But no, no, not not the Collinsworth way. He's always hated us. He was a Bengal, and that's true. Yeah, he hates the Chargers. He was yeah, like freezer bowl, right? Yeah. yeah. There, there was so many times where he would be like, "Oh my!" He did have a couple moments with Herbert where he's like, "Oh my god, did you see that pass yeah, again?" Because you can't not. You can't, 
you can't not say it. Right. When he makes those throws, it's like you can't not ha- have your jaw hit the floor from how accurate that was. So totally. Um, yeah, we feel at House of Fame. And yeah, didn't uh, didn't eat Taco Bell and the sheets are clean and hopefully they stay that way next week. Clean sheets. But uh, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Bolt Bill 714 who asked the question. The Rock says this. Know your role and such your mouth. Emmanuel Lacho, The Rock is glad your jabroni candy ass was able to wake up early Sunday morning, eat your honey nut bitch flakes, got, <laughs> got on your knees to pray for the Dolphins to win like, dear Lord, it's me again. And the Lord said, Stephen A. Smith. And you said, no, it's me, Emmanuel. And the Lord said, it doesn't matter what your name is. <laughs> See, The Rock and all the millions and millions of fans are glad you got to find an Uber to take you down to Know Your Role Boulevard, which is on the corner of Jaboni Drive, and check <laughs> you directly into the SmackDown Hotel. The Rock and all the Bull fam all across the nation were glad you found your way into SoFi Stadium, got yourself some popcorn, and got to witness the great one layeth the SmackDown all night on the Dolphins' ready poo candy asses. <laughs> The Rock is also glad you got to see Tua look and play like a big monkey came down to SoFi, squat on the 50-yard line, and take a huge pile of hot shit. And out of it came Tua and the Dolphins because they played like grade-A monkey crap. (laughs) The Rock is glad you got to meet the sweetest Bolt fans, the Brisket Broads, and not my dog, Eric, a.k.a. Perro. The Rock just got one more thing to say to you, Acho. Puntana, your ass. And out of here, because The Rock goes and gets Justin Herbert's size, 13 cleats, shines them up real nicely, turn them some bitch sideways, and stick them straight up your candy ass. <laughs> if you smell what the bolts are cooking. Okay, love you, bye. Gotta give it the people's eyebrow. It's hard to see in the shadow. I can't do it. That's impo- it's nearly impossible. It's nearly impossible. I don't have any sunglasses to work with that. But Great yes. script. Great script. Felt the energy. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, no question in this. No one. question there. <laughs> I we I concur, Bolt Bill. That yes. was awesome. But we can only concur when there's no question. But uh yeah, thank you. Thank you for giving us another great script. You squeezed it in there. Yeah. Um, very nice. Let's move it on now to Lexi M. Lexi. Who asked the question? Hang on. Did I just like what Lombardi called for almost an entire game? First, the shamelessly positive. This was not the team we expected to come out, and boy, howdy, was it a (laughs) motherfucking exciting ride. (laughs) Justin was able to get the ball out quickly, but still be so accurate. Kelly wasn't explosive, but was so consistent in running through them. Mike was catching shit like he never left. Allen was making some great routes to allow things to open up. Lindsay was actually back and we can finally shut up that jealous wannabe that has less clue of what he's talking about than Colin Coward. Negative sides. Bosa and the rest of the O-line isn't back yet. Dicker is probably going to be gone next year because he'll definitely be picked up by someone. Question time. How did you guys celebrate that wonderful win? And do you guys have plans to go to the Titans or Rams game? I feel like Rams would be an enjoyable experience. P.S. I guess you guys were right. Getting Lindsley back was the best adjustment. That was you. It, you yeah, <laughs> get Lindsley back. That's it's the adjustment. the truth, dude. He makes his guards look so much better. It's, yes. it's just insane. He hasn't given up a sack in like an insane amount of games. So yeah. it's it's next level. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. The guys did great. Um Bosa, I, it, yeah. I think the thing that we we need to talk about, and I know your opinion on this, but let, let's talk about it for the fans that haven't heard about it yet. I think we have to hold on to Dicker, Dicker the kicker, man. I, um, I mean, I don't see how he's not your kicker next year. That's I what don't. I mean. Like, I, 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 I love Dustin Hopkins, man. I think he's done amazing stuff for the team. I feel like he's had a couple of misses. The only miss that Dicker had, I think, was like something that was over fifty yards. Something. Yeah. And the, the thing that I like to see that doesn't always happen with Hopkins is that he is consistently kicking it out of the back of the end. Yes. On no the kickoffs, yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. So I don't see, you know, this is somebody that took this opportunity and absolutely ran with it. Yeah. And is now going to make the staff question whether or not they're going to bring back, you know, Hopkins is a bit older. He's been playing in the league for a, a while. Right. The kickers don't have the, there's a few that have like 
super long careers, but not all of them. Right. So right. young leg, crazy accurate. Like I have no like <laughs> I when I watch, I don't even watch him kick anymore. Like I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. He's gonna hit this. Right. Like he I made just, it, right? Okay. Just yeah, like sure. I did that to you on this other game. Like it <laughs> went know, well, right? right? Like, yeah, I was good. That was good. <laughs> Like I just I've had, had this much confidence in a kicker in so goddamn long. Like right. I'm just so proud of him, the yeah. dicker. Yeah, I I I think this is a situation of like, oh boy, you don't want to get rid of Tyrod Taylor, but you've got Justin Herbert sitting it's right there. Losing and you know your what job he can do. And the idea of losing your job because you got injured when he had j- he he got carried off the field for winning us that game. Remember? He gave everything in that you know, game. He was crumbling after every kick. And yeah, I don't want to it's an, I don't want to pull the job out from under his legs but Pun i mean come on like yeah <laughs> it's we're talking about dick or the kicker here i don't need, so i don't i don't know i i think i think we hold on to him but obviously, and he's gonna be like a million dollars cheaper every year so yeah i don't know yeah. so i i that's what i see happening but to answer your question as far as uh how we celebrate a wonderful win uh because it's late we get a good night's rest maybe <laughs> Lots of sleep. Yeah, <laughs> of, we, we record the we instant sleep reaction. a little bit better. <laughs> Usually, we get just get started working as soon as the game's over. We have an instant reaction, and Adam right. has to edit it, and then I upload it, and there's right. just a lot. So it's just hanging out. I, I think, yeah, the instant reactions that that's our celebration. Be able to get together all three of us and be able to celebrate a, a win like that. Um, but because it's so late, I mean, God dang it! Like, unless you're living in California. I mean, I feel bad Games for the over people on the East Coast. Yeah, if the East Coast people were an hour later than us, and I'm like, God dang it. Like, come yeah. on, can we start this game? Yeah, seriously. So, um, yeah, we're not quite the party animals we were. If, if we were in our 20s, hey, uh, we would still be celebrating. 10, We'd still be 15 at the bar. years ago. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd still be a bender right now. <laughs> yeah, we'd be wearing sunglasses and recovering right now. Yeah. Um, and making it to the Titans or Rams game, I don't think it's school. gonna be hard it's the holidays and it's like i can't get i can't get out there i want to so freaking bad but yeah i think kyle i'm I, hoping kyle the coach duggan can at least go i think he's gonna go i think he might go to the rams I, we're gonna try and we posted if somebody wants to this is a good time to say it if you're listening oh. to this now and you want to go to the game we're selling our tickets so we there just had go. good luck we just uh jay rudy bought our tickets for the last game and brought the win so this feels like it could be a good thing so if you want some tickets hit us up on dm and we'll 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 make you a deal. Make a deal. Yeah. Um, all right, Lexi, thank you Thanks for so asking you. the question. Let's move it on now to Senora Snappy, who asked the question. Victory Monday, guys. Justin Herbert wants to know what song you jam out to that he should jam out to while he's cooking that sweet, sweet brisket. I I personally think, I don't know who the band is, but I mentioned it in Van Focus. I'm okay. walking on sunshine. <laughs> oh, and don't feel good. Yeah. All right now. It's like classic 80s fair. Um, that's what's going on in my head when I'm floating around uh floating around town. I would love I mean it's gotta be a celebration. I think walking on sunshine is a good one. I'm not taking it away. Break good times. Come that's on. That's a little too on the nose. Okay. I wanna I wanna see some choreography. Okay. And I know that you could get into it with a little song called Shout by the Isley Brothers. Okay. <laughs> shout. Come on, baby. Shout. shout. Let me hear you shout. shout. Like, hands yeah. are just going to be up in the come air. Come on now. You can't not come dance on to now. shout. Like that. Yeah. And, and a little bit softer now. A little bit softer now. Everybody starts scra- You can't, like, not, like, Let that get smaller. Now. Get that stick <laughs> now. Come on now. A little bit louder now. A little bit of spices now. A <laughs> little bit of smoking now. Like, <laughs> come on. You can have so much fun with uh, Okay. I think I'll, I'm on board with that with some um, choreography and some yeah. salt bay. Can you imagine Justin Herbert, like, come can you on. Imagine now. Justin Herbert dancing. I want to see him dance. No, I do want to see that too. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, there you go, Senora Snappy. Thank you <laughs> for asking the question. Let's move it on now to OM Run. And shout out to Melanie. You guys basically asked the same thing, but I'm giving it to OM Run. So here we go. Was I at the game? Yes. Does everything hurt this morning? Yes. <laughs> Did I consume too much alcohol? Yes. Did I get drunk? No, because it was so cold. <laughs> Those guys at Lambo who take their shirts off, I get it now. And now for the best question. Was Herbert spiking the ball in the locker room the best play of the night? Yes. 
Uh, love it. I love it because it wasn't that the ball they gave him for like the most valuable player. It was like a specialty ball that like the network gave him, right? Like the oh, like a Sunday night, night football yeah. or something like that. So he, oh, maybe yeah, if you go watch been. the video, he spikes it and doesn't give a shit about the ball. The ball goes flying. He doesn't try and retrieve it. It's not about the accolade. No. It's about no. celebrating with the team. Yeah, in the locker room. And yeah, I <laughs> I just loved his demeanor that game. I was so yes. happy to see that you know post game stuff. It was fantastic. You know, I was just thinking the last time I was like, did, did Herbert ever spike the ball from a touchdown? And I remember he did. He did win. Remember, I think it was the first, his rookie season. I think it was against the Bengals where it was like, it was a handoff to Keenan Allen and then Keenan Allen threw the touchdown to Justin Herbert and oh. Herbert caught in the end zone and spiked it. And it was, the form was just as beautiful then as it was in the locker in room. In the locker so, room. I love it. Um yeah, more spikes from Herbert, please. So, Sign me up. OM Run and Melanie, thank you both for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Gavin Gibson. Gavin! Who asked the question. Let's go! A much-needed win under our belt. Did I rub it in my eight-year-old daughter's face after she picked the Dolphins as her team? You bet your <laughs> ass I did. I didn't hold back. It's tough love to bring her over to the Chargers where she belongs. My question for you guys is, out of the Two first down QB celebrations. Who done it better? Justin Herbert or Philip Rivers? As always, bolt up, guys. Let's win out now that we got this win under our belt. K love you bye. You gotta put those seven, eight year old. I have a seven year old. You gotta put them in check sometimes. Cause they get <laughs> they get a little too like big for their britches. They think they like can talk like an adult and tell you what's <laughs> up, and you'd be like, you can get out Actually, on the street. Do you want Ooh. your mac and cheese or not? Okay, because I'm not cooking it for you. Good luck burning the house down. Um, <laughs> secondly, um, I there is I expect Justin Herbert to do that. No one ever in a billion years saw Philip Rivers scrambling to get a first down and giving that sign. Mm -hmm. there, there is nothing like that. I, I enjoyed seeing Herbert do it, but Phil... When he did it, and then they showed they had to remember they had that shot on Keenan Allen, like yes. he, yeah, he was like squealing. Do it, he was do it, uh, do it. Yeah. yeah, so it, it's hard. I, Phil still wins that because he just has, I don't think that was his longest run of his career. Yeah, like eight the, yards. Phil wins it. I mean, again, the fact that Herbert did it, and I saw some people did like some mashups of like Justin Herbert doing it and then cutting back to Keenan Allen doing the celebration thing from oh, nice. the Phil version, which is so cool. Um. Phil gave it a little bit more. Justin Herbert got up and I love Justin Herbert's pose. He kind of had this like weird, like body turn pose doing the first down. Um, but when Phil did more of it, a model, he had more of a model. Vibe. He had more of a model, which isn't a bad thing. But when, when Phil got it, he came up, he's holding the ball. He does a look to the left. He does a look to the right. He looks again and does the first down it was for a comic comedy it was comic it was, effect yes it was so much more he understood he knew his role he knew that <laughs> he would never do that again and so he's got to soak up the moment just a little bit yeah, more big time um so yeah it, it's got to be phil the the og that did that uh that brilliant first down move so and, uh and gavin don't let her get away with that shit okay keep working on her keep it up keep, keep it up just yeah you know, it, bribes are good. I and mean, people say that's a bad way to parent, but it works, man. They're they're not fully <laughs> formed. They're not really have all their capacities yet. They don't think down the long line. A fucking gumball goes a long way. <laughs> goes a long way. Goes a long way. Yeah. Keep an eye on the dolphins. If they do any more losses, be like, so how those dolphins do? Oh, they yeah. lost. Hmm. Okay. It's weird. You just get like that's a weird. bag of candy underneath your pillow when the Chargers win. Yeah, weird. good girls get candy. I mean, we, Dolphins they, fans, they don't get candy. Don't so. get candy. No, not not. Not you sure you want to be a Dolphins fan? You sure? Gavin, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Drizzy Dragon, who asked the question. Finally, Shane, the charges we all want to see with the win over Tua. I mean, Dolphins. Okay, maybe a little bit of both. Moving on. My question is, if you could have Rivers or Herbert, which would you choose? Also, it's Drizzy because my first name is Drake, and Dragon was my childhood nickname. Okay, love you, boy. Good to know, Drizzy Dragon. Good to know. Drake. Drake Dragon. Drizzy Dragon. Drake and the Dragon. That sounds like a Disney movie. Like Pete and the, Dra Pete Drake and the Dragon. Drake and the Dragon are coming up next. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That was a good jingle. Good work. <laughs> okay. It's my job, baby. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, Herbert or Rivers? Who would you take? 
Sorry, dude. It's my heart and it's my head. And it's also a part of my head and my heart. I, it's just like... You gotta go hand in hand. It's Justin Herbert, man. Like, I love Philip Rivers right. more than anything in the world, but like, it's not. It's Justin Herbert, man. Yeah, I, it, it depends on how you phrase the question. If it's strictly just Rivers or Herbert, we don't know what the future holds for Herbert, but it looks extremely promising, especially with all the records that he keeps breaking. So I would say Herbert... Yeah, but if you like phrased it in a way where you were like, "Well, what if you had young Philip Rivers with this O line and these receivers and this coaching staff?" I might be like, "Oh, that might be a really tough question to answer." But for for the way you worded it, I've got to say, Herbert. <laughs> Phil Phil doesn't evade the pocket quite like Justin did the other night. That's true. Yeah, he wasn't quite Just, the mobile quarterback, and he'd stand there and take some shots, which I'd respect the shit out of that. Absolutely, Phil's the man. I love Phil. Love Phil, love Herbert, but if you're gonna make me choose, it'll be Herbert for right living now. in the now, man. That's where yeah. we gotta live right now, man. <laughs> Here you go, Drizzy Dragon. <laughs> Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Coach Lago. Coach, finally coach. a coach on this show. This is awesome. Finally, finally. I hey, hey, think he's still stuck in a blizzard, guys. He might you, be. Well, you know, you were waiting for him to come back. But we were. He was gonna jump in, jump in. Seems to be like internet, like blizzards come with like signal yeah. issues and shit. I don't know how it works. <laughs> Weather affects wi-fi i guess so <laughs> yeah it weird. is what it is but uh, let's move it on now to coach lago yeah. who asked the question hey bros wish i was out there to protect our boy reporting here from the social media bowl <laughs> your boy was 10 for 28 for 146 with a fluke 60 yard td where vanto got tripped um and the other <laughs> points were off a fluke fumble disrespectfully STFU and stay on the East Coast with that shit. Here on the West Coast, we have the best QB from the 2020 draft. Acho, retire like you promised, or Fahoko and Billy the Warrior are coming for that ass. <laughs> Back to things that matter. I mean, our boy J Herb was running around slinging that thing like the great god we know he is. Even I'm aroused, honestly. Those luscious locks look even better under the bright primetime lights. Those dives to Mike Dub and Keenan almost had me full Baker, headbutting folks on the sidelines. Great to see them gents doing their thing. So, uh, how much drooling and moaning were you subjected to watching with Hug in there, Wooly? More seriously, now that my middle name is out in the open, I wonder if y'all can guess what our six foot six football slinging, fish catching, golf loving, Phil Rivs channeling beast of a QB's is. Also, Bolt Fam, how about some respect for our head coach? Love playing for the guy and we believe in him. See y'all from inside the line soon, I hope. It's time for the playoff run of Our Boy Deserves. K, okay, love you, bye. Um, okay, well, I don't know what uh, Justin's middle name is. I do. <laughs> Hi, I know. Uh, Me? I do. <laughs> I hope it's right. It's Patrick. It's Patrick. It's Patrick. It's Patrick. No, this is Patrick. <laughs> Justin Patrick. Patrick Herbert. Herbert. <laughs> All day, every day. <laughs> All right. Well, now I got to look it up. Let's see. It's f***ing right. Is I'm Justin I'm absolutely Herbert's right. middle name. Patrick. Patrick. This is Patrick. You were right. Yet again, Kevin. And how does it feel like being with me drooling and moaning? Um, and subjected to there wasn't football. very much drooling or moaning. It was more of like, "Come on, <laughs> God damn it!" <laughs> I'm worried about your the people that live near you because I get a little too intense. I am seriously one of these days. I am going to get a noise complaint, and my only hope is that the, <laughs> the season. This, these primetime games are yeah. putting you in a bad spot. Like a lot of these yeah. people are trying to sleep. That's it's not late. my fault. Okay. <laughs> That's the problem. Oh, like, it's one thing if it's in the daytime. Game. It's another thing when it's like almost 11 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, I need, we need to start watching it at my house. I don't have any neighbors very close. <laughs> Thankfully, we have had no complaints yet. But uh, They're yeah, too it's scared either, of what might happen to them. <laughs> it's either screaming or yeah, like <laughs> just the it's like extremes. celebrating, it's extreme. coming over, squeezing me, hugging me. I think I power yeah, bombed like, my ribs. I did like an elk. Like, 
I elbow dropped you on one of them. It was pretty good. I like oh, yeah. flew across the room and jumped on you on the couch. It was pretty good. Oh, I miss. I I must have blacked out. Yeah, for I that definitely one. concussed <laughs> you for sure on that one. But you woke up pretty happy. And that's all I can ask. That's for. All that matters. <laughs> so. Uh, all right. Well, there you go, Coach Lago. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to CD. Yeah. Who asked the question? So thanks for the Kool-Aid clarification a couple of weeks ago. It was extremely helpful. I have a couple. Did this game in defense feel kind of like the playoff win we had against the Ravens a few years ago when everyone counted us out and the D was flying around like crazy making plays? It was amazing to see everyone click and watch Tua go 0 for 3 on his first three throws to some of the fastest wide receivers in the league. Also, the ads that Wooldog does after each Monday's episode, are those just on him or do y'all get together and create those? They're great. And do you have a fave? I take zero, zero credit for all of those. That is Adam's one-man band, one-man show, all the glory unto him. Occasionally, I will, yeah, I, I do. I, I come up with all of them, and I try to think about whatever we talked about. And I'll take credit if I said something fun. funny that triggered it. I'll take a little credit oh, yeah. for that. No, for sure. Like yeah. th There's definitely ones I've done because Kevin or Kyle said something hilarious, but and every now and then I'm like, guys, I don't know what to do. Like, <laughs> should I do the add on and I'll reach out to them? But yeah, we, I, I, how many of you I done now? So goddamn many. When did we I start mean, doing I do them? one a week? For... I used to do two a week because I used to do them on the Thursday episodes too. But then it was just like, I'm going to run out of like this is material. This, like, is extreme. this is too much. So yeah, coming up with a fake ad every week. Uh, cause I want it to be fun. This is a fun podcast. It should be silly and. Uh, you put so much work into it. Keep it up. Because it's my favorite thing. Like, it, I want to get to the end so I can hear what the f commercial is. And if I don't listen to the right. whole thing, I don't know what you're talking about if I missed a funny right. thing. It's awesome. So, yeah. The, I'm glad you enjoy them. As far as a favorite, though, um, <laughs> I, I think one. one of the one of the best ones, which we we, we had to demonetize our, our episode because of the... I did a BR guest for, for SoFi Stadium was and it was, we, we got copyright struck because it was the same song, but I did like, I'd like layered my voice on a bunch of things it and rewrote the lyrics level. to, to be all SoFi Stadium related. So that was, that was a lot of fun. That was one. I got the episode out late that day. Cause I was like, guys, I'm onto something. Give me a second. Yeah, I, I need, need the creativity. I need to make something. The one that um, made me laugh so crazy hard, dude, was Desmond King and the Whiny Magoos. It was oh, like that's the, a classic, yeah. All the albums that that they produced, it's like the country version, the rock version. All oh, of yeah. it was great. That, yeah, got to go find. I don't know what episode that was on, but Desmond. I'd have King to look for it. But and the yeah. Whiny Magoos is next. That level. was a good one. Yeah, because that was just taking all of Desmond King's tweets, yeah. and turning them into songs. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> oh God, that's my favorite. That one, I, I don't know. Go. I love that one so much. It makes me. Yeah, happy. I can't play the BR guest one because then we'll get demonetized. And I don't want that yet to happen again. again. <laughs> yeah. And how um, dare we not get that eight dollars and ninety five cents? Ooh, Disney, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> um, and then yeah, it, it as far as this being similar to like that that playoff game against Baltimore where the defense just came in and killed it. Uh it felt like that. Yeah. And even more so because of like they were backup a bunch of backup defensive guys, a lot of rookies out there that had to go and show up and uh yeah, that was uh, they were playing special. like they didn't have anything to lose. Like they were playing that game that Raven, Ravens game. That defense was playing like we're the last stance that we're going to make this this yeah. is going to because of us or not got to give it our all and we had guys that aren't starters playing extremely well on our defense and mm -hmm. and i was just so impressed like there's a level of urgency that like when your starters are in you're like okay they'll make a play i can maybe like i take this one not like they're taking t plays off but like you you can rely on the guy next to you that that it felt like all right well we all have to make the play right now which mm -hmm. there's a certain amount of urgency that comes when you don't have derwin james in there and he can cover you you know exactly all right. Well, there you go, CD. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Hawaiian Surfer. Certified Fresh. Ooh, ask the question. Hey, hey, hey. Whoa. Here I come, baby. My brother, Blonded Surfer, convinced me to hop on your guy's show, and here I am. Let me know if I do this right. Staley, wow, it looked like because we had many backups and he simplified the defense and everyone was clear in what their job was and decisive with their game. 
hoping he uses this and morphs it into a new version of uh, what their uh, this Staley D the rest of the year. Kudos to the man with big balls. <laughs> Lombardi, eh? Mm, did he have a good game plan today? 50-50. I give him credit here and there, but ultimately this offense still failed to put the damn Dolphins six feet deep. Three to four chances to score TDs and field goals, and the offense stalled more than it should have. For now, with Keenan and Mike back, it's enough. Question for the boys. <laughs> so, can I get to know you a little bit more? Favorite memory as a kid from each of you. Doesn't have to be Chargers or football related. Okay, me go surfy surf now. Caleb, you bye. Whoa. <laughs> Blonded surfer's brother. Yeah, Hawaiian, Hawaiian surfer. surfer. They sound All a right. lot alike. All pretty close. <laughs> Are you guys twins? What? Yeah, what? Tibbs. Um, you know, yeah, that was that was frustrating to see us have multiple trips into the red zone and not come away with a touchdown. Yeah, I obviously. get it. It's you know, it, it's getting that dialed in a little bit more now that we have Keenan and Mike Williams back. Um, that was a little bit frustrating, but you know what? I wasn't frustrated with the fourth down attempts. Yeah. There was, we had a few that game and the, some of them didn't that go first quite one right. Didn't go great. The first one didn't go great, but I'm not mad that he went for it. I know yeah. some people would be like, just take the three points. And it's like, <sighs> that's not, that's not the mentality of this team. The, the trust Herbert to get the first down and. I'm not mad with the, the, the there's there's a little frustration for me where like if you're at this position and you have all these guys on the field mm. why are you going to Carter why aren't you going to one of the guys that is like your dudes like mm. you want the ball in Herbert's hands but we need to get it to a dude that can guarantee us that he's gonna do everything he can to make that catch DeAndre right. Carter's great but it's just like who was on the field and how that first play developed where he got shut down with that little that little out he did behind the line mm. of scrimmage. I'm just like, come on, give it to Kelly up the middle. There's so many other options we can do of guys that, you know, we need to go north, not east-west. You know what I mean? So that's where I, <laughs> north, man. Get north, All man. All right, got to go hit the, got to check the ways, bro. Got to go north. Right. Can't go east-west, man. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know. There was some moments, but they, they just got to clean that shit up. That was just, just get it, Yeah, get it more dialed in. Get back. But, yeah. Um, and then a put it together. favorite memory from when you were a kid. Kid memory. Kid memory. There's a few. My dad was pretty rad. He used to I think my mom knows this. Might not know. <laughs> oh boy. Um, I <laughs> I had to go to the dentist a lot when I was a kid. Uh-huh. So I get checked out of school. Okay. But the school thought I had to go to the dentist a lot as a kid. I'd get checked out of school and go to the movies with my dad. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, dear. More than a couple handfuls of times. Like, really? I'm going to see, like, Army of Darkness at, like, nine with my dad on his lunch break. Like, <laughs> next level. This is the next level. And this is why I let my son hang out with you and me and watch Aliens. Because... <laughs> well, you just let the cat out of the bag on that one. <laughs> Shit. I hope Josie doesn't listen to this part. But I mean, he closed his eyes. But he wasn't traumatized. He didn't have bad dreams. Like, no, he handled it pretty well. He had a great time. So, and yeah. I didn't like force him to do it. He's like, hey, dad, what are you watching? This looks pretty cool. I'm like, all right, well, you can sit down. Yeah. If you get too scared, you know, just remember it's a movie. And I don't know. That was like early childhood shit, like just locked in my brain that's that, non charger related. That's hilarious. That makes me think of uh, going to the movies with my dad. And I had not seen the first Gremlins, but I saw that there was Gremlins too. And there must have been some, I don't know Oh, you why. told, you told, I, you told the story before. I remember this On the now. show? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm telling oh, you. You like now. went in and you got like really, <laughs> yeah. Keep Hawaiian on, Surfer hasn't heard this yeah, story. Come so. on, why, yeah, it was Hawaiian Surfer. <laughs> this was, I don't know what it was. There must have been a trailer or something that I saw. I was like, oh, that looks fun. And we went to go see Gremlins 2 and I'm watching it and I had not seen Gremlins 1. So like. On and on my heart, I'm like, I can handle this. But like, as soon as we get in the movie and I see the gremlins, I'm like, they're terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> they're like crawling around. People don't know they're there. They're gonna get fucking eaten. And <laughs> I'm gonna see it. And I'm gonna scream. And I'm gonna have nightmares. And Dad, can we please go see Flintstones meet the Jetsons? And he's like, Fine. <laughs> so you we soft. went to another theater. And we had, mind you, we had already seen 
the Flintstones meet the Jetsons, but I was like, can we please just go see something other than this? I need to clean slate this. So we went to go see like the last half of Flintstones meet the Jetsons. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. And, uh, and I'll remember that for a long time. Yeah. But, it uh, sticks with you. Uh, there you go, Hawaiian Surfer. Sorry we couldn't get one from Kyle. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure we'll get him to give you one. Uh, I'm on sure it's some traumatizing back. thing I did to him when he was. I'm little. sure it was. I'm yeah, sure he would have pulled that out of the bag, chest yeah. or car yeah. trunk or something. I, I, something, something locked in. Yeah, couldn't was, get out. <laughs> I was a loving brother, but I was a pain in the ass. Brother, yeah, for sure. Um. All right. Well, there you go, buddy. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on out to Tyler Foffy. Foster, who asked the question. Best QB in the league and some swagger to go along with it. I like the sound of that. Defense f***ing putting it together. And we're getting Bosa back? League better be on notice because we f***ing coming. Shit, I need a question. Are we hitting our stride? Can't love you, bye. Fafi coming in last second with the question. I'm not sure where that was going. And then he's like, yeah, I, got, I need one. Get like, one oh, in there. F- question. Oh, f- <laughs> well... <laughs> Clearly not necessary, Fafi. I think I've had three here that didn't have questions, yeah. but uh, thank you for squeezing one in there. I appreciate that. Um, are we hitting our stride? I don't think so. I think we're coming out of the blocks fast. Ooh. I feel like we're just figured out what's going to happen now. We got all of our, every mit- muscle fibers twitching properly. It's like, we're just like, boom, we came out of the gates just now. Yeah. And now we have okay. a four game season to catch our stride before we hit the playoffs. That's I like how it. I feel. I like it. Yeah, I can agree with that. Um, All right. Well, there you go, Tyler. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Kyle T, who asked the question. We achieved an important victory yesterday in our quest to reach the playoffs, but now we have important decisions to make. I'm sure you saw my comment on YouTube, but which shall it be? Herbertron or Herbimus Prime. <laughs> Both nicknames should strike fear in the hearts of our enemies. Secondly, I have a bold and definitely crazy strategy for the game against the Titans. Instead of futilely trying to stop Derrick Henry, what if we just let him run the entire field for a touchdown every time he gets the ball? Not only will it prevent them from playing keep away and running down the clock, but he might just run himself out. What do you say? So crazy it just my work or just crazy? <laughs> that is a bold <laughs> strategy, Cotton. I uh, love your face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not past it. Uh, <laughs> do what you got to do. Yeah, maybe he just gets tired. You know, they put up 35, <laughs> but he just gets idea. tired. Yeah, I can see it. It's a bold strategy. Yeah. It's, um, uh, it would be different. I don't know that it would work. Um, I did love, I mean, kind of tagging on this, but looking back at the previous game, the time of possession, the guys had the ball in this last game. That was I'm such so ha- a huge difference. I've just, I've come to find, I'm so much happier when the offense is on the field. Like, I don't have to turn away. I don't have to hide around a corner looking at you when we're on, like we're on, when we're on defense. And then right. I'm just like, and if we had the ball for 40 minutes out of that game, I'm like, <laughs> all right this is awesome <laughs> i love how you've like flip-flopped throughout the season of like oh, i hate i can't stand watching the defense but i can watch the offense oh i can't stand watching the offense but i can watch the defense like, now i came all the way back you're I'm full offense. circle baby yeah um i love that so as, as far as your strategy there kyle t uh could it work Probably i don't not. think so i think we're talking <laughs> about some freak athletics that they could probably or run he's, 20 touchdowns they literally and they wouldn't get tired. Divide, <laughs> like separate the sea, like, you know, like, oh, what? Divide, part the Red Sea, part the Red Moses. Sea. Yeah. yeah. And then he just like doesn't know what to do and he panics and fumbles. Like if you get two of those, <laughs> the strategy, he's like, oh, I don't know what to do. This is weird. And he fumbles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. I'm not a professional running back. <laughs> yeah, what, what is this? This is weird. Where are my hands? And then two fumbles. And I think that could, could if you could do that twice, you could catch him off guard and really get in his head, play with him. That could work. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Awesome. Uh, but not. you're thinking, Kyle, I like that. Thank you. And the nickname. Ask asking the question. What do you think? Yeah. Herbatron or Herbimus Prime? Herbatron. Herbatron is flows a little bit better, but I do it's like close to Herbimus Megatron. Prime. It's close to Megatron. I they know. Well, you can't Calvin call Johnson. Megatron because of Calvin Jones, but or Johnson. Johnson, excuse me, Calvin Johnson. Um uh 
Herbimus Prime, I think, is just too hefty. I think Herbertron, while it's close to Megatron, it's it's distinctive enough to be different. From but what Megatron. about Herbinator? The Terminator. Sure. Is he no? I, I'll go with Herbatron. Herbatron. Yeah. yeah, we'll we'll stick with Herbatron, like Herbatron. But if you've if you've got a different idea, but Herbimus Prime's pretty clever. That's what I'm saying. Like, I like Herbimus Prime. It's just it's too much. But he's it's good too... in prime time. It's got a dual thing, though. Like he plays well, well in the in, under the big lights. I mean, this last Sometimes, game, he not did. really. I guess yeah, he did. Uh, this hasn't been the best season. <laughs> Herbatron, hey. my final answer. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle, for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Hot for Herbie, who asked the question. Nut trucking. Verb. The trucking of nut. <laughs> Is there a nut trucker in the game with more heart than our boy, Austin Eckler? My Lord, that man trucks nut well <laughs> above his weight. Some of those hits he absorbed while grabbing some extra yards were insane. Man, was it great to see the gorgeous, luscious, flowing locks of our boy Herbie trucking nut out of the pocket, <laughs> only then to deliver pinpoint nut to the <laughs> chest of Big Mike Will. Oh, Lord, we are at a different side when we have Mike and Keenan to target. My question to you, who in junior football was the best trucker of nut out of you three? Miami Dolphins slaughter forever. Japanese dolphin slaughter never. Playoff chances are alive, baby. K love you. Hooroo. All right. Well, I don't have to answer this because That's I tricky. didn't play football, but uh, well, I have a feeling I know who Kevin's going to say was the better one. <laughs> it depends. Lottie. depends on what we say. I think younger, like... <laughs> Pee-wee-ish area. Yeah, in, in, they're saying in junior football. Junior football, there's a lot of junior football. Sure, sure, sure. I think, and Kyle's not here, so he can't defend himself. I know. And I'm fine with that. <laughs> fine with that. Every time. <laughs> but I will give him some props. Younger football, I think I have I have it a little bit. Just a uh, bit. Uh -huh. As soon as you get older, Kyle, because I made him the man he is today, like, beat him up, made him stronger, all that energy. <laughs> I passed on that gift to him. And oh, then I started, <laughs> I started doing other stuff. Like I was making movies and stuff. Right. I just couldn't carry the gift that much longer. It's just a uh, hard gift. It's a heavy gift, you know? Yeah. Christmas is the coming gift and that... everything. You got to hand it off. Got to give away. So uh -huh. um, I'll take credit for everything, but Kyle, older, me, younger. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. There you go. Hot for Herbie. <laughs> It will, yeah, no. let's check it with Kyle. Kyle, what do you think? <laughs> just if cut you think to like Kevin's a right, don't say anything. <laughs> you just cut to like a cabin with like anything. snow yeah. coming down, a blizzard, just yelling, <laughs> yeah. you, Kevin! <laughs> just take a snow globe and shake it. <laughs> um, I hope you're okay. Right. I love you, Kyle. I hope you're yeah, not snowed in too long. We do there. hope you're okay, buddy. Hope, you're, we'll... hope there's enough alcohol to keep you busy for a couple <laughs> days. <laughs> um, hot for Herbie. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Derwin's Dirty Duck. Oh, yeah. Who asked the question? What is six foot five inches, has a glorious mane like an adolescent Simba, and can launch dimes all day long? Our oh, boy, our leader again amongst men, our absolute superstar of a QB, the great man Jay <laughs> Herbert. Man, did he ball out against that team of flipper wannabes? Who needs pre-workout when you have the absolute euphoria of a primetime Chargers win over an 8-4 and four team of friendless sea mammals? So many fans have been losing their minds over the past few weeks, especially with the Lombardi hate, but man, Hakuna Matata, we have a genuine shot at the playoffs. It's in our hands. Big shout out to my boy, Hot for Herbie, the captain of all nut. Bolt up, can't <laughs> love you, bye. We didn't address the nut trucker. Like there is something to I be said. I thought that was what you were asking. No, or but answering. we we addressed the who was better at nut trucking, but just the idea of being a nut trucker. Oh, I see. I respect a trucker of nuts. Yes. Trucker of nuts. Nuts in the chest. Nuts on the ground. Nuts. 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 <laughs> Merry Christmas. No. <laughs> no cuts. No nuts. No. <laughs> <laughs> no cuts, no butts, no kicking in the coconuts. Am I right? That's correct. Okay. 
All right. Well, there you go. I don't see a question, Derwin's Dirty Duck, but uh, thank you for... Herbert. Uh, no, yeah. Herbert is the man. He Herbert's balled the, man. the fuck out. That's right. All right. Let's move on now to the next one. We've got Leo, who asked the question. Some teams adopt the underdog mindset. The Chargers were born with it, molded by it. And now here we are with a win by frying the fish in prime time. It was delicious, especially feeding that big f***ing Elta and <laughs> showed. But now that the game is over, it's time to set the mentality back to zero and zero to take care of business and hold on to this playoff spot. I can taste the playoffs just like I can taste the fear from Batman. The Chargers are getting healthy and with the possibility and getting most of our defensive stars back next week, including a possible post activation, the boys can strike fear into the rest of the league and show what the hype was about in the preseason. So I ask, do you think we can win out and go into the playoffs with tons of momentum or will inconsistency plague us again? Of course, bolt up and f- the haters as always k love you bye p.s all chargers fans are cardinals fans tonight and praying for a patriots loss well those prayers went unanswered there leo but uh that's okay i i feel like we can run it i think so we won't know about consistency until titans if you can do the same performance that's the first opportunity for consistency that's yeah. a back-to-back situation we haven't had a back if we could do what we did last game to the titans then i'll be like oh yeah oh yeah we okay got, oh yeah we got this okay. i'm feeling good about this i think titans like we were like we got to win the dolphins game i kind of feel like we need to win this titans game i really the titans do. i mean i think the titans are arguably the hardest competitor that we have in and the remaining just, schedule ultimately you control what's going to happen to you mm-hmm. if you do that you drop down to like a 50 percent chance of making it you win you're up in the 70s it's like yeah so i i think we can do it Herbert wants to keep Ocho keep talking your shit to send it to him because he played lights out. All right. I mean, the fact that we got out of that game without losing another player, I think that's that's a huge step in the right direction because we're not going to be like, oh God, who's got to fill in for somebody else this week? Or yeah, we're running out of defensive linemen. Who are we going to get? It's like, no, we we came out of that healthy and it was a win and and everybody played really well. So if we can take that into the next game and if we can get some players that have been out back like Joey Bosa, that would be that would be huge obviously getting getting somebody like that back in and so even some of the other players like Bryce Callahan like getting Callahan back in would be amazing it's best so Joseph day yeah come on Trey Pipkins yeah oh, there's a long more. list we'll take oh, yeah keep going <laughs> Derwin <Don't James>. stop. <laughs> uh, leo thank you for asking the Thanks, question leo. let's go out of Ask Bolt Fam with Dead Bolt. All right, all right. Who asked the question? Last night I had the most peculiar and arousing dream. Oh, no. I was jogging along the beach wearing nothing but a Walkman and a black leather belt, but that was not the unusual part. <laughs> oh no, I do that every morning. As a man of extreme discipline, I must exert myself on a regular basis. Anyways, I kept a steady pace for the rising sun showered my face with trickles of warm golden light. Then I stopped dead in my tracks. Ahead in the distance, I saw a slender, glistening object wriggling in the sand. But this was no ordinary sea creature. No, it was a sad, pathetic porpoise of a hum- with a human head to his head. So naturally, I moved closer to inspect its quivering blowhole. <laughs> oh, no. But before I could reach it, the Chargers' defense came swarming from the sea. They surrounded the trembling aquatic beast, then hacked it apart with their long, slightly curved harpoons. I must confess it was vicious yet strangely satisfying. <laughs> when the bloodbath was over, the players returned to the sea, but there was something still moving inside the dolphin's bloody carcass. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was a helpless baby with the face of a manual Ocho. His wretched diaper was bursting with feces, and of course he was crying like a little peach. I went running to save him, but sadly I was too late. 
From out of nowhere, Cameron Big Kick Dicker came charging across my path and foot blasted <laughs> that screaming infants <laughs> over the waves and into the sea. I stood in shock, staring at the splashing baby Archer, but then as he sank into the blue abyss, something else began to emerge. It was Justin Herbert. He was massive. His shiny bare chest was rippling with muscles and his rose from the water depths like a golden god. In one hand, he was clutching a shimmering lightning bolt, and in the other was the Lombardi Trophy. I awoke with just one throbbing question. What does it all mean? <laughs> Until next time, guten tag, you kinky bastards. Can love you, bye. <coughs> His scripts and that voice. What he's, got, he, he's got the German guy. He, <laughs> he foot blasted the screaming infant. Just, Punted him. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All, right. All right. Favorite voice. Thanks, Dead Bolt. <laughs> and sorry to Dead Bolt. We were supposed to do a fan focus tonight and I I we'll blew get him up on the, the scheduling. One. I got yeah. you, buddy. I keep we'll these scripts coming. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these oh, are good. Shit. These always kill Kevin. Oh, um shit. <clears throat> what does all right. it all mean? What Adam? does it all mean? Uh <laughs> Well, there's a lot to break down. I think obviously uh Tua's the face of the Dolphins. Uh-huh. So he goes down <laughs> with the Dolphins. <laughs> he goes down. And then the baby Acho inside the Dolphin. I think uh he's he's kind of scheming within the Dolphins or trying mm. to hype them up. He's their hype man. So of course that comes from within. Uh and he is a big baby, so he won't retire. And maybe, like he said, he would. Maybe he's a big baby. Maybe the Chargers being semen, being at sea. <laughs> you. I didn't mean exactly that to sound dirty. I know what you think I said, but I did not mean to say what I said. I said what I meant to say. Chargers are just kind of floating out with the tides, not sure how to, you know, not get carried away. Okay. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. And in your dream. Yes. They went. They went straight north. Oh yeah, and they got out of the ocean. They murdered a dolphin. They murdered him. a pregnant yes. dolphin at that. Clear. <laughs> this defense is vicious. Oh, I'm, what, that's what I'm reading. Okay. Vicious defense. This team's got its path. It's no longer floating in the ocean. Okay, that's my interpretation. And then yeah, Cameron Cameron Dicker comes in to I mean, hunt the shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> Gus we, he's we a great kicker. Yeah, he's we a finally, great kicker. You, like the the ending of the story wasn't that J Justin Herbert killed Acho. It's that yeah. you feel confident that you have a kicker. Yes, that won't blow it. All right, he'll kill it. Right. Yeah. I mean, and, yeah. and we actually didn't really sing his praises, and we should before we leave. But Mr. Dicker was nine of those points, nine of those twenty three points. He kicked three field goals, and, and they were all perfect. That's winning. I mean, technically. 11 if you count the the extra points so yeah that's that's a lot of points that mr dicker's taking care of right now chef, and we're very thankful to have him chef's kick yes Kiss to the kicker the dicker yes and then yes justin herbert holding the lombardi trophy if anybody's going to bring this franchise the lombardi trophy it's him yeah. it is going to herbertron. be him, herbertron yes, herbertron air bear herbie whatever name you think he goes by the herbinator uh they're all equally amazing and yes he will bring us the lombardi trophy it will be mine. um oh yes oh yes it will be mine. oh yes <laughs> uh all right deadbolt thank you for asking the question and thank all of you sons of bitches for <laughs> asking these questions so good god so many of them um all right well i think god i think that's gonna do it for us <laughs> here at charge chat any final thoughts there kev no, had a great right. time. We did it. You and me. I think we got together. it all out. We missed Kyle. I thought that's right. Oh. Mi Other way. How about <laughs> we missed Kyle? Hope you hope you get back. Well, we should have Kyle on Thursday and hopefully Yeah, hopefully they've shoveled him out by then. Get him out by then, yeah. We <laughs> we miss you, Kyle. We miss you, Kyle. Um all right. Well, that's gonna do it for us here at Charger Chat, folks. Don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad, any place. Okay, love you. Bye. 
Hey, love you, bye. And now, a word from our sponsors. Are you ready for the hottest track from Desmond King and the Whiny Magoos? Then get ready for this collection of the biggest tracks with some of your favorite hits. Like, gonna need answers. I continue to do my job, but I'm gonna need answers real soon. All right. If anybody know me, I'm the most humble person you will ever meet. Now you can have all your favorite hits on one compact disc or cassette. Is there a reason I'm not on the field? Some people want to know. Is there a reason I'm not on the field? Some people want to know. No way we should have lost now. No way we should have lost now. There has never been a collection quite like this before. Until now. Christmas is just around the corner, so be sure to order your copy of Desmond King and the Whitey Magoo's Best of Collection. Order now. To order, call the number on your screen or send check or money order for the amount shown plus shipping and handling. Must be 18 years or older. 